go. All right. Y'all can start typing your questions. I'm just getting us going on TikTok and Instagram. So give us about 45, 60 seconds, and we will get right down to business. And we're going to do rapid fire Q&A. Ask anything, anything on your mind, buying, leasing, paying cash. It does not matter. We'll be hitting all subjects. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Deshaun, the auto advisor. And uh, I spent 14 years in the car business from 2006 to 2020. I left in 2020. And since then, we've been focused on teaching everyone willing to listen how to pay less for cars than everyone else how to enjoy the car shopping process, whether you're a good negotiator or a bad negotiator, that's not gonna matter when you stop negotiating and you start getting bids. You know this phone always gives me challenges getting on Instagram. So, all right, we're up on Instagram uh, and then I'm starting TikTok. So let's get down to it, come on in. We are live. And shout out to the sharers. Appreciate all of you who share these broadcasts. We could not, we can't do this without you. We can't do those, we can't do this without those of you who are inviting your friends to the broadcast. It matters so much. Okay, so I'll be taking questions from every platform. If this is your first time on a live broadcast, just type the number one. And then as everyone who's here for the first time types the number one, if you've been here before, if you could just type a welcome to all the first time people, if you've been here before, uh, let's just give the brand new people who've never been here a nice welcome. If you could type welcome, this live show is sponsored by my brand new digital book. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. You can get it for 75% off for 30 minutes by going to my TikTok bio or my Instagram bio. You'll see there's a website there. Just click the picture of me. And uh, for 30 minutes, you can get it. It's normally $97, but you can get it for um, for $24, 75% off, as long as you get there before the timer expires. If you are on YouTube or Facebook, you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com. I'm going to post a comment for you guys. Or you can scan the QR code if you happen to be watching on the TV. I see you, Ida. All right, I see you, JM. Okay. Uh, I see you, uh, Skinner. Good to see you. Yep, discount is in effect as long as uh, as long as you go there and it hasn't hit zero yet. All right, let's get the questions going. All right, I'm just going to be rotating between all four platforms, so just start typing them. Hello, I think uh, you lost your train of thought fixing your phone. Well, we just started, so uh, I am known sometimes to lose my train of thought. So I just ask that if I do that during this broadcast, when I'm answering a question that you post, just Help me get back to it because we do these rapid fire questions and sometimes that does happen. Uh, Preston asks, this one's from YouTube. How do you check your equity on a lease? Now, who didn't know you had equity? Who didn't know you could have equity on a lease? Who didn't know you could sell a lease? Type one in the chat if you did not know you could sell a lease. So what Preston's asking is, uh, how do you check your equity? Well, that's the first step in seeing if you can sell a lease. So the first thing you're gonna do is call your bank. You're gonna call the leasing company because you need to know how much you owe. That's called a payoff. Do not look at your residual value and do not look at your contract. You want to call your bank and get the payoff. There's two types of payoffs. One's a customer payoff, one's a dealer payoff. Once you have that number, the, the customer payoff, you're going to go on these sites that I tell you to go on. They're going to give you online cash offers. Some of them are online car buyers and some of them connect you with a local dealership. But you want a cash offer. You don't want anything else but a cash offer. Nothing else matters in this world. You're going to go to CarMax.com. You're going to go to uh, Driveway. You're going to go to Carvana. You're going to go to Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer. Very important you don't go to the regular Kelly's Blue Book. They're not going to give you a cash offer. You're going to go to AutoNation, sell my car. And you're going to go to CarGuru, sell my cars. This is your first introduction in getting bids. And this is, this is the first thing. If you have a car to replace, this is your first introduction. Before you think about the car you're buying or you want to lease, 
this is your first step, which is the equity assessment. Now, if you if you have a lease, when you are on those websites, you must put, you're going to see a question that says, do you have, is the car finance owned or leased? You want to put owned because there's something in their website that triggers if you put leased because the website is not trained to know who has a third party restriction or who doesn't. That's not important. What's important is you put own. You're, you need to know what the market value is of your car. And the only way you're going to do that is with, with real cash offers. Now, when you call your bank and you get a payoff, and let's say it's 15000 those cash offers are 17 or 18 or 19000 That means you have equity. That means that you can make money by selling that car. That gives you the ability to get out of the lease early, gives you flexibility in what you can do, and it won't matter even if you're on, even if you're over mileage. I sold my lease back in 2021, and I was over mileage, and um, it didn't matter. When you sell your lease, you pay no penalties. It's a clean sell. All right. That is called the equity assessment. OK, and that's the first steps of what you do. All right. Let's keep the questions coming. We're bringing them from all platforms. Let's go. I'm ready to spend six thousand in cash for a car. How do I shop? If I was spending six thousand, I'd be on Facebook Marketplace. Make sure that you're checking the quality of the titles narrow it down to like you and look for a private owner who is selling their car from their driveway or at their workplace. Do not buy from dealerships. Um, I don't go into detail with that strategy, but that's something I just did. I picked up a car and I, uh, hold on. Hold on, I had a call coming in. I always forget when we go because we've been going on Instagram on on uh, on this device, and uh, I always forget to put on Do Not Disturb. So I just had a call come through. Can y'all hear me? Audio still clear? Let me know if the audio is still clear. On Instagram, I know we all good. Uh, Mel's, how do I get your book? Just go right to my TikTok bio, click that picture of me, click that website. And click that button that says 75% off my new book. As long as the timer is not zero, you got 75% off. You won't pay the $97. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So what I was saying is I don't go into detail on those strategies because frankly, it requires a uh, an, an entire new segment of uh, how to buy cars privately. But what I will tell you is that's a good start, you know, and it's just, just, there's, there's, I teach more mainstream at some point, maybe we will get into that. But um, that's the first thing. Don't buy from a dealer who's posing as a private owner. You want to buy from a private owner, has the car. They're going to know everything about the car. They're going to know what accidents. And you call and you try to find a dealer. Any of you who are buying like a couple thousand dollar cars with your tax refunds, Facebook Marketplace is the place. But you want to avoid, you want to avoid the dealers who are posing as owners. The best deal is going to come from an owner, someone in their good your cars in their garage. They've had it five, six, 10 years. This one I bought here was a grandfather. He was 98 years old and he had the car for he had the car. He was been he's been driving. It had 70,000 miles on it. And I just needed something to get from point A to point B because I barely go anywhere. So um, that's a good start. Look for an owner and make sure you have a local mechanic. Take it to a local mechanic before you seal the deal or bring your mechanic there. Say, hey, look, I'll pay you $75 if you can come with me and just look at this car, give it a visual. You know, you want someone with you when you're buying cars with no warranty, guys. If you are buying a used car with no warranty, you want someone with you. Mechanic. And uh, one of the benefits of having a great local mechanic, y'all know I preach on that, is that they're typically, and don't ask them to work for free. Hey, listen, can I get you for an hour? I want you to come with me, take a look at this private car and uh, and, you know, they'll they'll give you a lot of peace of mind. All right. Let's keep it going. Hey, Preston. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I posted the comment on YouTube. You said, how do I get the book from YouTube? I posted. I, I thought I posted the comment. Maybe I forgot to post it. There you go. You can just click on Deshaun's link, Deshaun's and uh, and you can get it. Let's see. All right. I'm looking at TikTok. I see a lot of people on here. Could y'all keep tapping the screen, shooting those likes up? I appreciate y'all. I see a lot of people, but I don't see y'all asking a lot of questions today. So, all right. Ash, type your questions. We'll get to them. Let's go. What we got from Instagram? All right. Let's go. 
why are dealers still charging markups over MSRP and when will the market correct? Great question. 80% um, of dealers are going to charge ridiculous prices. It doesn't matter. The key is you must learn to get multiple offers because we've been buying cars for below MSRP since the pandemic. Uh, Felicia was the first one to use what I teach. This was back when I first opened up my online school, Cars from Home University. It's a video library. And she came in middle of the pandemic. We opened it because there was blood in the streets and it was like people were paying ridiculous prices. She came in. She got a BMW for $1,950 off MSRP, BMW X1. And uh, that showed me that it didn't matter because I knew even with Mercedes, where I worked for Mercedes, we had hot cars. There was always dealers willing to discount. You're always going to have a dealer that wants to sell lower than everyone else. The key is you got to find them. And that's why what I teach you to do is sort. You're not negotiating one to one anymore. If you're using what I'm teaching you, you're going to start getting bids. And if you don't get bid, you will be you will be at the mercy of whatever dealer you walk in. And if they're overpriced, then you're going to think everything's overpriced. But uh, I'll be showing you throughout the broadcast several deals recently done because I, I have the benefit of working with people all around the country who send me their deals. Some of them I coach. Some of them just DM me to shine. I use your stuff. Look at what I paid. So we get to know that there's deals out here for the people who are going to learn to make people bid for their business. But for those who want to shop the old way and negotiate back and forth one to one, yeah, it may look like there's no deals out there. So you got to step into this new world. It's a better world. It's an easier world. Um, you're going to enjoy shopping. You're going to feel like you're in control. And you will see that there are deals out here. Lots of them. Lots of them. Welcome to the new people. I see we got some new followers. Uh, let's go. TikTok. What's the best CPO car to get for a 17-year-old? Well, that's a great question. There's a lot of great cars. There's a lot of great cars. The key is looking at what, if I'm looking, uh, so first of all, here's the thing. What is it about a CPO that makes you think that a CPO is a better car than a, than a quality pre-owned car? Because oftentimes, this is a great question. This one's from Instagram. Oftentimes, all right, so here's how we narrow down a used car. And this young lady who asked about the private party, don't change the process. Use this process and it'll give you peace of mind. Anyone shopping for a used car this year or in the upcoming future, type U. Type the letter U. Okay? This is going to be for you guys to keep in mind because this is our process of how we try to protect ourselves. There's no guarantees, but when you have boundaries... You have a good shot of protecting yourself against the foolishness and, you know, the results people with no boundaries are going to get. So the first thing we're going to look at is the title. When you go in my book, I teach something called the multiple marketplace strategy. You need to be on every marketplace that has cars. If you were buying a TV, you would not only walk into one store. Some of you may not even walk in, right? I want you to see the more you learn this, the more you're going to see that the way I'm teaching you to shop is the way you already shop for other stuff. But for some reason, when you shop for cars, you do this, you, you know, you kind of do this, uh, this new process that you don't do with anything else. So when you, when you open these marketplaces up, CarMax, Driveway, Carvana, um, Carfax.com, Auto Trader, Car Gurus, eBay Motors is up there. I want to be everywhere there's cars, and I'm looking at a hundred mile radius. That's where we start. When you, this is my multiple marketplace strategy. If you use these boundaries, you got a good shot of protecting yourself, and you certainly will get below market used car deals, which is our goal. Y'all know our only goal when it comes to market value is below market value. So the first thing, once I open those up, I'm looking at narrowing it down based on title. So I'm going to look at the title and see. Now, how do you get the title? Sometimes there's a free car fax. I'm going to give you all a gem. This is something that is, it was a secret strategy that I teach, but 
since you're on here, I'll give it to you. The Carfax sometimes is on the marketplace, but sometimes it's not, in which case they're going to try to sell you a Carfax. Now, many dealers have contracts with Carfax, and if you simply go to the dealer's website and look at the same car that you saw on CarGurus or Carfax.com, you'll see the well, Carfax.com always gives you the Carfax of whatever they're listing. But it, on Auto Trader, on Cars.com, on these on Car Gurus, it's not. So you want to go to the dealer's website, and many times, not all, you can find a free Carfax there. Save yourself forty dollars because we need to see the Carfax because that's going to tell us the quality of the title, and then the next thing we look for is the service records. It's super important. There's probably nothing more important than service records to determining if you get, if the car was taken care of. Accidents won't tell you that, title won't tell you that. You could buy a certified pre-owned car, which is what this young lady was asking, it's best certified pre-owned car for a 17 year old. If it doesn't have quality service records, it's not as good as a car that does, that may not be certified. So once we go past, you wanna see constant and consistent service, constant, consistent oil changes. Then you move to accidents and we look to we look for minor. Some people said, Deshaun, if you might say no accidents for me, that's your thing. That's fine. Some people say moderate accidents. You got to be able to look at the what happened based on the car bags. If it says vehicle towed, that's a deal breaker for me. I would not do a car to have vehicle towed. That means it was a serious accident. And uh, airbags, deploy airbags deployed, serious accident, deal breaker for me. Vehicle drivable, it's a minor accident. Could have been a fender bender in a shopping mall. So once we look at that, now we've looked at a quality car from a quality standpoint. Doesn't necessarily mean, oh, CPO. Because sometimes CPO, some of you may experience, they'll charge you three, four grand more for the CPO. I'd much rather get a car that checks those three boxes and save the $3,000. Now, if the CPO comes in at the best price based on all the inventory, that's different. But many times it's not. Sometimes dealers, especially the 80% of dealers that's going to overcharge, they will certainly use the CPO as an opportunity to mark the price up when it's not worth it. So that's what I say. That's our process. That's how we shop for used cars as far as quality. Now we have another step that's not all because that doesn't guarantee y'all here. I didn't say nothing about price. So in order to know you're getting a great price on a used car, you must know what the original MSRP was. You put some of you heard me talk about that. So, you know, we'll, maybe we'll go deep on that, but I wanted to let you know, don't lock in your mind CPO. CPO is not going to guarantee that it's a quality car. What I just went over is no, there's no guarantees, but that, that'll at least give you a good shot. All right. Welcome to all the new people. Everything that I'm talking about is in my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Part of our launch is it's 75% off. You can get it in my Instagram bio, on my TikTok bio. What I just broke down for you was part of my multiple marketplace strategy. And it's simply, it's just looking at all your options. I find that we are not looking at enough options to really see the whole market and uh that's why that's why we're overpaying sometimes uh i'm in arkansas i read that it's the third worst state for car leasing is that true what does this mean um i've had people all over the country tell me that leases are bad and i've had people all over the country and you know who listen to us who get great deals i pay no attention to what people say i pay no attention to commercials i pay no attention because what you're gonna see give, give an example and don't keep the questions coming this is a uh, Bonita. Bonita, when she leased her Telluride, this was the middle of the pandemic. That's why I keep the date. It was December 2022, not the middle, but it was certainly when there was lots of people overpaying for this truck, five, 10 grand. People, there are people now that are leasing this same vehicle that Bonita got, and they're paying eight, nine hundred a month. So she 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 paid 600 a month and she drove off 600 dollars. she gave him no money down just gave him 600 her first month's payment and she drove off said thanks for showing me the way we never we never concern ourselves with other when you, the, if you listen to me and you 
try and test what I'm teaching you, what you're going to have to do is block out anybody else because they're going to project their experiences on you. And unfortunately, they have no strategy. Many of them, unfortunately, are shopping the old way, negotiating with one dealer, and they're probably negotiating with an 80% dealer that's overpriced. And they have no idea how to get multiple offers and see the market and get the winning deal. So their experience is totally different. So your whole thing is to make sure that how you shop, you get the results. And then eventually you'll be able to tell them the same way I do. It's the way you shop that's leading to these overpriced uh, offers you're getting. That's just it. <laughs> Somebody came on the show the other day and said, there's no deals out here. For you, there isn't. With your strategy, there isn't. You keep doing the same thing. You expect a different result. We know that's the definition of insanity. But when you do things our way, different results. All right. Let me get back to, let's go to one on TikTok. I mean, on Facebook or Instagram. We're taking questions from all the platforms. So let me just go to the comments here. Uh, Peyton said, just joined in. I'm looking to buy a brand new Toyota Highlander when buying new. Is there any negotiation room? Of course. I've been to two local Toyota dealerships. That's not enough. Only two grand Highlanders I've seen on a lot. Do you have to order them? But that takes away from having a good experience of checking them on site. Peyton, um, it doesn't matter when you walk in to a dealership. If you're walking into the 80%, the numbers show. And you will hear, see, our rule of thumb, when we buy new cars, we use something called, I created called the 25 to 5 strategy. We're connecting with 25 dealers online to get five offers. That's the goal. Now, here's the beauty. Here's what shopping out of 20. Now, some of you might say, Deshaun, how do you do 25 deals? We do it all online. It's copy and paste. Your goal is to get five offers because you're going to see how different the offers are. Some dealers are going to charge you ridiculous money. That's the 80%. Let them do who they let them do what they do. The 20% are going to beat them. The only way you're going to reach reach the 20% is by getting multiple offers. And the other benefit of the 25 to 5 and shopping out of 25 dealers inventory is if you went into two Toyota dealers, whatever y'all have is what I got. If y'all don't have it, I don't have it. But when we're connecting with 25 dealers online, how many of those 25 have a car we could want? Maybe 10, maybe eight, more than two. So the leverage is in sitting in one place and actually talking to multiple dealers. And we do this in 20 minutes because you're using my scripts I give you copy and paste scripts when you're using, when you get to the 25 to 5. Now, this strategy, I told y'all, is different than the used car strategy. Used car is called multiple marketplace strategy. New cars and leases, we shop for them the same way. We're going to get bids 25 to 5. Now, if you do it your way, you can do phone calls and you can talk to, I always say, you can talk to sales managers. Um, that's going to take longer, but you can do it. It's better than the old way of walking into one dealer and when walking into another one and saying, okay, there's nothing. Because what's going to happen is you start projecting your experience and what's and when you find a car that you someone has a car, you're, you're going to talk so much, you're going to overpay based on things you say like this. Man, you're the first person that I can't, you, you're the first person I saw that got, got a, even got a car. Ching, ching, money just went up. Oh, really, man? You know, yeah, these are hard to come by. Maybe they're not. Maybe eight dealers have them within a 75 mile radius. They're not going to tell you that. Yeah, you know, these are very tough. You don't see a lot of these. And, uh, you know, that's why there's a premium on them setting you up based on what you said. Yeah, man. Well, shoot. All right, man. I thought I was going to have to order one. Ching, ching. Price just went up. So the language you use is costing you money, which is why when you use what I'm telling you to do, there is no talking. I don't want you talking because car dealers, one thing that they, they trained us on is listening. Everything you say, we're listening to it. So you don't know that. And so the best thing for me to do, who's not a good negotiator? Just type type, type me if you are not a good negotiator. Y'all know the only way we win here is be honest. You know, that's how we win. Because I'm going to teach you how to win when you're not a good negotiator. 
Thanks, Ava. I appreciate you too. Yep. All right. Brown Sugar. All right. I see you. Peyton. Nah. Okay. Diane. I see you. Ava. Okay. Let's go. Uh, Boss. I see Jim Rich. So you got all right. So there's many of you on here, not a good negotiator. Here's how you save thousands of dollars stop negotiating one on one and start getting multiple offers and bids. You don't have to. If I walk into the grocery store, I'm not negotiating for the best price spaghetti sauce. They're all trying to sell me. If you wanted to buy a 100-inch TV right now, you're not negotiating for the best price on a TV, are you? No. You just know where to go to see all the people who want to sell you a TV. And that takes the pressure off you because these people are competing with each other to sell you a TV. That's what we're doing with our offers. You are going to now start to get multiple offers. Listen, Best Buy is overpriced 80% of the time. Sometimes they're not. When I want to buy a TV, Best Buy is not a place I'm going to bank on a deal, but every now and then Best Buy beats everybody else. So even the 80%, you never know. you got to be multiple offers and you're going to see how much money you save. So again, you could do it your way, Peyton. You could call five sales managers, get different prices, or you could use what's in my book. This is part of my 25 to 5 strategy where you're using my scripts online. And the reason why I can write scripts is because I use the same scripts they're writing to you guys. They're writing to us because I buy and lease cars too. Hey, Deshaun, thanks for the inquiry. When can we have a conversation? Well, actually, I'm going to be doing my entire transaction online. Um, do you have something that I'm looking for? Copy and paste. I got all the scripts in there. So when you don't have to talk, I don't have to worry about you making a mistake. And you don't have to worry about yourself making a mistake. So all of this is in my book, Car Shopping for People to Hate Car Shopping. And I'm giving you two ways to do it. For those who are not going to get the book, I gave you the manual way. For those who are going to get the book, you know what's in there in that 25 to 5. Okay, you can get it for 75% off in my TikTok bio for 30 minutes. Once the timer hits zero, it goes back up to $97. And my Instagram bio as well. Click that website, get your book, come on back and join us. Get your 75% off. All right, let's keep it going. Keep the questions coming. I'm loving this. All right, uh, this one is YouTube. And we'll go everyone. We'll go every platform. So let's continue to, you know, I'm just rotating between them all. Last one was Facebook. Now you, I'm currently leasing a Jeep Grand Cherokee leases up in August. Do you foresee decent deals being available for a new challenger, Scat Pack or Mustang GT? Do you work with people on purchasing? I don't. I don't work with, I'm working, the way I work with people is the way you see me. Through information, through education, I don't fish for people. I'm going to teach you how to fish. Those of you who are hiring people or getting people to fish for you, it's one, you're giving control of your deal over to someone else. And this is not a small deal. There's thousands of dollars to be made in your car deal. You're giving that to someone. Um, and I'm able to get results for groups. We've been helping people. We've helped probably, I mean, God, just personally helping people, probably 1,700 people since 2021. And, you know, a couple thousand more that I've never even heard of that are none. And I just get a DM. So we can certainly get results if you're willing to say, all right, teach me this online process. Because here's the real when you learn my process, I get deals in 90 minutes. There is no car that I'm going to buy or lease that I'm not going to get the best deal in 90 minutes. Now, in the beginning, it's going to take you a little longer because this is a new process for you. But by your second, third deal, you'll be getting cars in 90 minutes. It does not take longer than that to get multiple offers, to shop the market. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. My Infinity that I bought last year didn't take me more than 90 minutes to get that. Uh, every lease that I've done, and I've had six leases, didn't take me more than 90 minutes. Now, that's not that's different than deciding what you want. I don't want you rushing that because you've been taught to rush that process. The choosing what you want, the getting out there and seeing cars and test driving, you've been we don't rush that. But when it comes to deciding and saying, all right, I like this. I like this. Let me get offers. 90 minutes, 90 minutes tops. 
Um, when it comes to what a deal is, he asks if they're going to be good deals on a scat pack on a Mustang. All you can do is get oh. offers. We have no idea. Some of you saw, um, I grabbed this last, a couple of days ago. Some of you saw this. I'm not going to share Kimberly's deal. I'll share this. This was um, Sean. Sean posted in our group he was purchasing an F-150 Lightning. MSRP on the vehicle is $73,285. He's saving $20,000 off the vehicle. And uh, $49.90 of that is dealer discount who, win, who won the bid. The winning dealer discounted the vehicle $49.90. Uh, the rebate that he got, that he revealed, he didn't know about it coming in. See, you don't worry about what what new cars and leases have rebates. You reveal them because some people will tell you, oh yeah, there's a thousand dollar rebate. There's really a fifteen hundred dollar rebate. Some people tell you there's no rebate, but there's really a two thousand dollar rebate. The eighty percent we can't trust. All we do is we reveal what the offers are. $15,500 rebate. And here's what I asked him after he said this, because he was like, listen, I'm about to pull the trigger on this. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I said, look, I said, Sean, I haven't seen the other offers because he know he's using the 25 to five. We don't accept an offer without seeing at least five. And he said, but I'm assuming you got at least five. You're saving over 20,000 on this on this with the discount and the rebate. But the only way to know it is to compare to the other offers. Is this the lowest? If so, slam dunk all day long. He said, guess I could have put a little bit more info on here. Yes, I got 15 quotes. I couldn't. And y'all might be, yo, 15 quotes. He did this from home. Probably took him 90, probably took him 90 minutes. Even this is his first time using this. He said, uh, I couldn't find anything under MSRP. This is very important. So he got the first initial quotes. And he's getting 80 percent dealers quoting him can't get under msrp look he said i expanded outside my area to find this deal i'm going to another state to pick it up which is something i never would have thought of before or would have never considered before this class that one thing he decided and knowing how to shop wide saved him another five thousand dollars off the vehicle in addition to the rebates that he got so we don't know what it's going to be. Some people you're going to see, I'll show you, and they save 3000 That's their best offer. Whatever the best bid is, is what the lowest price is in the market. If the vehicle's in more demand, some people are going to be paying five, ten grand over sticker, three grand over stick, sticker, then we don't know what we're going to save. That is the point. Sean didn't know coming into this he was going to save $20,000. He just said, I'm picking this car. I'm going to shop the offers and I'll see where the bottom of the market is. That's the goal. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Let me remove this. This is what we do, y'all. This is what we do. And this is what I want you doing. This is not, you don't have to worry. Oh, I hope this is going to work. This isn't an experiment. You don't have to say going into the grocery store, man, I hope I don't overpay for the spaghetti sauce. You're going to look at multiple spaghetti sauces and you're going to pick the best one. You get what I'm saying? It's just not, you know, oh, if, if I told you today, you got to go and buy a 100-inch TV in two days. That's all you got. No, is anyone in here worried about overpaying for a 100-inch TV? Even if you never bought one before. If I just say, hey, look, I'm going to give you the money, but here's the goal. You can't overpay for it. Is anyone in here worried about overpaying for a TV? No. No. Because you know, I'm going to look at Amazon.com, Walmart.com. I'm going to look here. I'm going to look here. And I'm going to see enough prices where I'm going to snatch the best one. When you have multiple offers, that's how you get price assurance. And that's what you need to bring to your car buying. That's what I want you to bring. I want you driving off, guaranteeing that you paid the lowest price in the market, like Sean, like some of the other people who are going, who, you know, who I'll show you. All right. Um, no, I don't offer buying services, Don. Um, it, it's what I teach is too easy. If you if you can't get this, and this is what all due respect, if I'm telling you that I make these deals and that these people that I'm showing you make these deals in minutes, and you're like, yo, could you do it for me? You don't deserve to win. And maybe you didn't see it. I'm not saying that's you, but I'm talking to anybody who is like, 
You want to give control of a, of a five-figure financial transaction to another person when you have a new way. Old way, I get it. Painful. Negotiating back and forth. I hate it. Please, can someone help me? Can someone come with me? I get it. But when you're being exposed to a new way and you're like, man, I really would prefer someone do it for me, you just don't deserve to win. That's just, you gotta, you, this is your money. If you think somebody's gonna care about your money as much as you care about it, you got another thing coming in this world. All right, let's go. What's your advice about negative equity? Great question. Three things that you could be doing. All right, y'all, anyone who has negative equity, all right, listen up. There's only three things, three outcomes. Two of them lead to a car, one of them doesn't. Negative equity, I call it the devil to your car deals. It is the bad credit for people with good credit because it's the only thing I've seen where people leave with no car and they had an 800 score. Negative equity can only be paid off. That's step one. There's three things. I teach this in my book. Let's go into detail on this. First of all, those of you who don't know, negative equity means you owe more money than the car, the car you're in is worth. So the highest offer, whatever the highest bid you can get on your car from those companies that I mentioned about 15 minutes ago, if that's still lower than your payoff, then that means you have negative equity. Now, option one, which is the best option, is to pay the difference. Because the companies that I just told y'all, the companies that we, go, we do our equity assessment with, they're going to pay more than everyone because they're the ones that are already in the bidding business. They're already into, they know they're competing. They don't mind. They're going to put their offer out there. So they're not going to, this is why we don't trade cars. If you're new to the broadcast, again, all the new people, your first time on here, could you just type a one? If you're, this is your first live stream ever you've ever been on of, uh, you know, car shopping Q&A. Type one. All right. Could everybody just type welcome to the first time people, please? If you've been here before, even if this is your second time, just type welcome so we can welcome the new people who jumped on to, uh, to the broadcast. We got a lot of new people I see from all platforms. Just type a welcome because what we're building over here is a community of people who are going to lead the charge and save the money on cars. We're the first. Y'all are the early adopters. Y'all are the first ones to use this. Um, and, you know, so. All right, there you go. Everybody got their welcome. So when you get those offers, let's say the highest offer is like 18, but you owe 20. I try to come up with the 2,000. That's what I do. If I got cash, if you say, Deshaun, I got a little cash, I want to make sure I put it in the right place. The best thing to do is to take the highest offer from the highest bidder, pay off the negative equity, because now you have the freedom in your and you don't do this before you get a car. It, you you literally do this when some of you are like, Deshaun, I gotta I gotta make sure I get my new car before my old car. That's fine. I'm just telling you what's gonna happen. You're gonna be selling that car to the highest bidder, and that car is not gonna be involved in the next transaction. The dealer is gonna know nothing about it because the dealer who is going to win the bid to sell you a car is not going to be able to also win the bid and pay the most money for your car. See, this is the thing. This is why y'all going to see when you use this, you're not going to be trading cars in because the chance in order, the only time we're doing business with a dealer is when they've won the bid. They, they're the lowest price in the market. So to think that they're going to turn around and be the highest offer for our old car is just unrealistic. It's not going to happen. So what we're doing is we are going to that's the goal. That is first. That's the best option. Now, let's say, Deshaun, I can't pay the difference. Now, here's your second option and your only option if you want a car. You have to transfer that negative equity. Now, when you transfer that negative equity, you have to keep in mind something called two things. One, the dealer who you're going to do, you have to do a deal now with the dealer you buy from. You have to do a deal with the dealer you buy from. That's why, I mean, I'll go into option three. You might want to hold off, pay down the negative equity to the point where you can pay the difference. Because, again, 
what this is oftentimes going to do is increase your negative equity. So if, if you had negative equity and let's say it was a $2,000 gap over here with the online buyers, when you end up bringing it to your new deal, it's going to be larger than that. Because again, the dealer can't pay that much, can't pay what CarMax would pay, can't pay what driveway would pay. So your negative equity is going to be larger than that. So you're going to get your offers and then you're going to add the negative equity to whatever deal you make. That's all you can do. And you need to be keep you need to keep in mind that based on how much negative equity you have, you're not going to be able to add all of it. Give you an example. All right, let me break this down real quick and we'll keep the questions coming. But this is what we do. We go into every subject to take care of everyone. And many of you will find you're in the same situation. This person probably asked the same question that you wanted to ask. That's the beautiful thing about this stream is if you just stay on long enough, somebody's going to ask the same question. So when we get our bids for our new car and then we get the best deal, that's when we go to that dealer and say, hey, what would you pay me for this? You don't need to tell them what you owe. You just need to let them see your car and say, hey, I got some offers online, but if what would you pay? And you let them see what they pay. And now your highest offer from CarMax might have been 18. That dealer's highest offer might be like, listen, the car is worth 16 to me. And there's nothing you can do because they're being real. They can't pay the prices that the online car buyers pay. They can't win the bid from both sides. It's just not going to happen. That's why if you can pay the difference, that's the best. Transferring is the second. And then you have to think about loan to value, which means if I have seven, if this is for you who want to do no money down deals. For those of you who got some cash, this doesn't bother you. You got a couple thousand dollars, two, three thousand dollars. This is not going to bother you. But for those of you who are trying to do complete no money down deals, transferring large amounts of negative equity, here's what it takes to do a no money down deal. This is exactly what it takes. You buy the car. Let's say it's 30. With good credit, the bank is going to approve roughly 20 percent above whatever the car's value is, which means 20 percent above 30 is six grand. So the bank will approve at max $36,000. Now, if you buy the vehicle for 30, you slap your taxes on there for a couple thousand. You slap your doc fee and documentation fee, motor vehicles on there. Maybe you're up around 34,000. No money down, no problem. You slap five grand. You, look, watch this. You slap two grand of negative equity on top of that. You go from 34 to 36. You're still under 36. Banks approve, bank approves it, no problem. But when you try to bring 7,000 of negative equity over, now you're going from purchase price 30, taxes and fees take you up to 34, roughly, 33 and change. And now you slap seven grand on there and you're looking at 40,000 and you're saying, bank, please lend me 40,000 on a $30,000 car. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. That's the times where the dealer comes to you and says, hey, we need you to put four grand down. And you're like, hey, why do I need to put four grand down? Because you're above the loan to value ratios. You have too much negative equity to be able to do a no money down deal. So if that's you, what you're going to find, I walk you through this in my book, you might have to wait it out. Pay down the negative equity. What you're going to find sometimes is it makes sense to get your car fixed if it's having problems, get a quality mechanic, or just keep the car for a year, year and a half, pay down the negative equity, and then transfer and most of you should not be transferred to a finance. That's why you're in that issue. You should be transferring to a lease. We'll put an exclamation point on that because I just talked about how you get out of it. The cause of it is you buy cars and you don't lease and you're a short-term person. You're not outliving the depreciation, but you take these five and six year loans and you trade the car in in two and three years. You always have negative equity. The, the, the solution for negative, it's only two causes. Sometimes it's an emergency. Maybe you had a car and it was a two-seater car and now your wife's having twins and you're like, yo, Deshaun, I need an SUV, man. I was going to keep this car, but hey, man, I got to switch. This car doesn't work anymore. That's an emergency. That's a, a legitimate reason for negative equity. Oh, I just want to switch cars. No, you should be leasing. And the reason you have ne negative equity 
is because you haven't understood leasing yet. And when you do, not only are you going to pay less, but you won't be in these situations anymore. All right, long answer, because negative equity is the devil to your car deals. I'm going to continue to say it. Um, I want you looking at it like, man, if I got negative equity, it's almost like bad credit. That's how you should be looking at negative equity. Stay out of it. Get out of it. Stay out of it. Structure your deals in a way where you don't have negative equity. And don't listen to people who say, oh, you should just take a shorter loan. You take five, six year loan, try pay off your car in three, four years. Has nothing to do with the depreciation. You're losing because of the depreciation. The depreciated value of your car, when you go to replace it, it's too low. That's why you're losing. It has nothing to do with how quick the car is paid off. They want you to throw more money at the car, take a shorter loan. Instead of a $500 payment, pay $700 a month. You won't have negative equity, though. Horrible advice. Learn leasing. That's what we teach. We talk about leasing. We've helped tons of people understand leasing and transition to their first lease all day long. Everything I'm talking about, and we got more questions. We'll keep them coming. Everybody getting value out of this type dollar signs. If you're getting value out of the live, you like the show, you're getting value, type dollar signs. This is sponsored by my new book. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. It's a digital book. It has all my scripts, all my steps. It's in a step-by-step -step format. Buying's in there, leasing's in there, everything in a step-by-step -step way, the 25 to 5. And uh, you can get it for 75% off as part of our launch in my TikTok bio for 30 minutes. Once that timer hits zero, it goes back up to $97. In my Instagram bio, click that website. If you get there before zero, you got the 75% off. And uh, I'm going to post it. I'm going to post the link for you guys on Facebook and YouTube. There you go. Just click the Sean's book and get your 75% off. I see a lot of dollar signs. Glad you guys are all getting value out of it. You helped me a lot while purchasing my new car. That's what we're here for, Double Trouble. That is what we're here for. Uh, the name of the book is Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. What's a good refinance company? Just go online. Here's some rules to keep in mind, y'all. Some of you got high interest rates and you're getting ready to refinance or you're looking at refinancing. Here's some rules to keep in mind. First of all, go online, type in refinance auto loan online. You want to look at couple a couple offers. You can let multiple people access your credit with a hard pull within a, uh, you, this shouldn't take you any more than two days. You want to let these people access your credit. It's called rate shopping. Experian has a, has an article on it. If you want to type in rate shopping experience, you'll see they wrote a long blog post. They give you up, they give you between 14 and 45 days until the window closes. You're going to do this in about two days. Refinancing, let all of these companies access your credit so that you can get the best rate. You must get bids. We have a something we call the bank bidding war. We don't just choose our bank. We don't just choose our credit union. We, we make multiple people bid, including the dealer's banks. And the rule is don't stretch out the loan long as possible. You want to take the highest payment you could afford at the shortest loan. Because oftentimes when you're ready to refinance, you've paid for a year. You've paid for two years. You don't want to go in and let them say everyone who wants to loan you money wants you to take it for a long time. Hey, do seven years. You could always pay it off earlier because they make more money. The longer, if you don't pay it off early, I make more money. So. And many people don't. Some people will, but many people don't. So what you want to do is you want to look at not stretching out the loan, lower the interest rate on the refinance, and take the shortest loan that you could afford. If you've been paying 500 at 14%, when you refinance, don't let them, hey, you know, you could drop your payment to 300 if you go to another six years. Don't fall for it. You want to say, listen, I've been paying 500 Give me the give me the lower interest rate. I'll pay this thing off in another three years at the 500. Shortest loan you could afford. Don't let them stretch out the loan again. All right. Yep. Pay more, save more interest in that case. That do not let you don't fall for it. That's the refinance scam. All right. Let's go. Uh Facebook. We're back on Facebook. Coming to the end of my lease, residuals 23,647 being offered 22,9 for value of my car. Who offered you that? Should I buy the car at the end? No. 
No, the only time we buy our leases is when we are keeping the car eight years. That's the only time. There's no exception to that rule. That's why it's called the eight-year rule. It's called the eight-year rule. It's the depreciation rule. When you look at a car, this is what you got to think about, y'all. This is the depreciation curve. Look, buy a car for $30,000 tomorrow. What is it worth? See, we take payments out of this. It's easy to understand. You buy a car for $30,000 today. What is it worth tomorrow? You didn't. You drove it 10 miles. You just drove it home. What is it worth tomorrow? Look, Cuban ruler, 20. <laughs> you know, maybe a little more than that. You came back. I've seen cases, though, where people bought a car, brought it back in three days. You know, I thought it was going to drive, rush their shopping process. Oh, I don't like the way it drives. What could you give me to switch out of this thing? A person who's paying cash would never do this because once they see that they're losing six, six grand in three days, they'd never do it. But people with payments, this is why it's hard to understand how much money you're losing. So we keep the payments out of it. Look, 25 grand. You bring it back the next day, you're trading, you lost five grand. Now, if you park the car outside for a year, didn't drive it, bought a brand new $30,000 car, you park it outside, what is it worth in a year? Didn't drive it one mile. Now you're talking about Cuban uh, ruler, maybe 20, 21, 22. You, lo you lost 20%. You're going to lose 20%. So when you start seeing that you are, um, your, your whole mission is to say, how do I pay the least amount for depreciation? That's the unseen expense. We call that the unseen expense, depreciation. So when you hear the only way to beat it, there's two ways. You're going to keep the car long enough where after about six, seven years, the curve goes like this. I always say, who's the who who has a who has a who has a car outside their driveway? See you later, Connie. So I got to go back to work. Who has a car outside of the driveway that they've had for nine or 10 years or more? If you have a car in your driveway right now that you've had for nine, 10 years or more, type me. OK, Jane, I see you. Um, okay, hold on. I got to scroll through all these comments. Okay, Shell, I see you. Okay. Yep, 19 years and still going. Look, all right, look. So now here's how you beat the depreciation curve. You can take the strategy that they've employed. This is one way, and I'm going to tell you about the other way. This is why we don't buy leases, because you've already had the car for three years. Now you're in a depreciation curve, buying it all over again as a used car, and you're you're back in the depreciation curve. So when you look at a nine or 10 year old car a year from now, it's going to be worth about the same thing it's worth now. About. If it's worth 10 a year from now, it's going to be worth probably 95. That means you've won. That's the reward. That's the reward for purchasing to get there. If you're not going to that level, then you should not be purchasing. Uh, and the other way to not get killed with the value drop from depreciation is aggressive leases, great lease deals, great lease deals. That's the only two ways. If you're not doing either one of those things and you're replacing your cars in three, four, five, six years, you're losing a ton of money. Depreciation is killing you. And you got to step and pick your way. That's why the most important question, if you open my book and if you ever hear me mention it, I call it the most important question is the first question you ask yourself when you the when you as soon as you think of, hey, you know what? I think I want a new car. I think I want another car. How many years am I going to keep it? Most important question. As soon as the thought, as soon as you say, man, I got to buy a car, your college student needs a car, does not matter. How many years are they going to keep it? Because if it's eight or longer, then they can win. If it's not eight, then they should be shop you should be shopping for a great lease deal. Let me show you what a great lease deal looks like. An example. We get tons of them. The, don't pay attention to advertisements. Those are not great lease deals. Those are those are not even deals. I don't even call those deals. You take somebody like Danielle, 
Danielle's driving a $44,000 Audi 2024, $550 a month. Now, some of you know, the new people you might not know unless you've seen a video that I made, how many, every $5,000 on the purchase price of a car is about how much per month? Every $5,000 is about how much per month? We might have a bunch of new people. Yes, TikTok, 100. Yep, exactly. Exactly. 100. Good job, JM. Exactly. So when we keep these things in mind, when you look at a $20,000 car, first thing coming, if you're going to buy it, forget the money down. That comes later. We automatically need to assume $20,000, 400 bucks a month. $30,000, 600 bucks a month. $40,000, 800 bucks a month. Because that's what people are paying when you wonder, and some of you may be paying it. I'm, listen, you know. So if you're long-term and you're getting to that nine, 10 year mark, God bless you. Pay off the car, get to the reward. But if you're like Deshaun, I don't have plans on keeping the car that long, then you can't compare to something like a good lease deal. This car that Danielle's getting, 44000 that would normally be 900 bucks a month. There are people who are buying that car. If they did no money down, they're paying 900 bucks a month. If they stretch out the loan to maybe six years, they're paying 800 bucks a month. She drove off with 550 all day long. Here's another one. Greg, 1% lease. He got a $56,000 MSR. And you don't get these offers by going into a dealer. They sat at home. They used the 25 to 5. They got at least five offers. Some of them, you heard what Sean got when he got his, his, light, his lightning. He got 15 offers from home. This Greg, he said, look, I'm excited about my latest lease purchase. Graduated. The system worked. I followed the steps, set up a great lease deal, 36 months, 12K per year. You can adjust your mileage too. I know we haven't talked about that in this show so far, but you could. You, there's leases that go up to 15, 20, 25,000 high mileage drivers. You can't keep breaking the eight year rule and thinking that you're not losing money. So we, 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 we talk about you guys too and how you should be incorporating leasing if you're not keeping your cars eight years. $56,000 vehicle, y'all, that's a $1,100 a month payment. He's paying 527. Imagine this guy is pulling up to people who have the same exact truck at a traffic light looking, hey, well, man, yo, we got the same truck. Yeah, man, how you like it? Man, I love it. Nice truck. Yeah, man, but shoot, it's expensive, man. This thing ain't cheap. Now, he expecting Greg to say, yeah, yeah, man, you know, but we in this together, man. No, Greg like, oh, how much you paying for yours? Man, I paid. My note is uh, just, just under 1000 Really? Yeah, I didn't do no money down though. Okay. What you paying for yours? I pay 527. Dad, you must have put down like 25 grand. No, I, I didn't. I just I just gave him the first month payment and drove off. Yeah, I lease it. Oh, oh, you lease it. Oh, okay. I heard about that, but I ain't, you know, I ain't in the leasing, man. I like to, I like to own my stuff. You know, I like to own it. All right, man. You go ahead. Keep owning that. Own that thousand dollar payment. We driving the same vehicle, man. You know? God bless you, bro. You lost. You lost. Now, again, if he's going to pay off that, if he's going to keep that thing for eight, nine, 10 years, then he's going to win later. He's not winning now. Greg's winning right now. Greg going to be winning for the next three, four, five, six years, seven years over him because he's going to have an old car. But one day he pays it off. He outlives the depreciation nine, 10 years. You see him 10 years later. Hey, man, remember we ran into each other? Yeah, um, yeah, we had the same vehicle, right? Yeah, man. Yo, I see you got the 2031 now. Yeah, man, I still lease mine. You know, I still I like to turn mine every three years. You know, I'm still paying my same 527, 550. You know, um, but I see you got the, the you know, you got that truck, man. Yeah, I paid it off. You know, I ain't had a payment on it the last three years, man. I'm gonna keep this thing till the wheels fall off. They both won. They both won. No one lost there. 
But if he don't keep it 8, 10 years, he lost big time. Thousands lost. <laughs> so, if there, and, and even when he has the title, someone said he doesn't own it till he has the title. Even when he has the title, if he doesn't keep it long enough to let that depreciation cool off, he lost. If he trades that thing, he pays all that money, $1,000 a month, and trades it while the car's still dropping four, five, six years, and goes and does it all over again, starts a brand new one, losing more money than we could ever even imagine. And that's some of you. I got to tell you the bad news, but I can't get you to the good news until I tell you. Some of you are like Deshaun, that's me. I've been buying cars, yo. I got told, never lease a car. You know, those people have cost you money. Whoever you listen to, they have cost you money. That's why we work adamantly to provide the information for people to understand that people with loud voices have been telling y'all for years, wrong information, very loud voices, and they won't admit it. They won't admit it, man. I wish, man, you got to be humble enough to say I led millions of people wrong. Dave Ramsey has done tons of damage. It's balanced out because he's helped a lot of people invest in the stock market. He's helped a lot of people become debt free. So I think it balances out from a moral standpoint, but it does not change the fact that he has led millions of people wrong when it comes to leasing. Millions. And one day if he's able to say, you know what, man, I found out, you know, I was wrong about this. Um, I, I Listen, anyone can repent, but I certainly, you got to be a super humble person to say that because the damage is done. Now the only way he could do it is to really go on a mission to educate the right way. Like you got to right your wrongs now. You can't just let leave all this blood in the streets and say, y'all, I was wrong. Let's keep moving on. Let's just move on. Can we just move on? I know I cost y'all a lot of money and y'all trusted me to give y'all the best information. But sorry, y'all. I, di I didn't know. You can't, you know, you can't do that. You got to right your wrongs now. Same energy you use to destroy leasing. You now have to do more than that to educate the people that you just that you financially set back. So but that's what we're here for. Because we, we don't count on the fact anyone's going to do that. So uh, if you're not keeping your next car eight years, you should you should be shopping for a lease. Business people, Toro, Uber, different. We're not talking about you because you can't predict your mileage. If you're doing 30, 40, 50,000 and you're trying to do as much as possible, that's a different story. But I'm talking to people who are you buy your cars. You're 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 the you're the you're the regular you're a regular person. Deshaun, I'm, I ain't doing no Uber. I'm just, I just, I'm buying a car and I need to know, should I buy it or lease it? If you're not keeping it eight years, you should be leasing. You should be shopping multiple offers to get a great lease deal. That's going to get you the best cars for the least amount of money. If you are buying and you're keeping longer than eight years, then you should be buying and you should be paying off your car when it's convenient for you, quick as you can, and keeping your car until the wheels fall off. Eight, nine, 10 years. Anyone else, you're losing money. What's the 30,000 person mile person a year? Uh, what's the 30,000 mile person a year? Okay, wait, hold on. Let me take a sip of water. We still getting questions from all. We got a couple more. We got a couple more minutes and then we'll wrap. Um, and you know, we'll be back. Like, we'll keep these live streams going. I want you always to be able to hop on one. I want you to always be able to tell somebody if you hear them shopping for a car, hey, go join Deshaun's live stream. He does this car shopping QA. Go hop on it. Uh, hold on. Somebody said, what's the 30,000 mile a year person to do? Not Uber, not Toro, okay? Just a high mileage driver. When I, I was a manager at Hyundai for a couple months, and first time seeing, six, no, a couple months, six weeks, <laughs> the owner ended up getting indicted. So God showed me very early, this is not the place for you, son. But I had a great six weeks. It was a lot of fun. But this was a highway dealer. Like, if you Googled highway dealer, like, there's a picture of this dealer would have came up. So, but this guy comes in. I'm helping him return his lease. And I see he has, like, 70,000 miles on the car. And I'm like, you lease this? He said, yeah, I always do a high mileage lease, man. I'm in sales. I'm, I'm on the road all the time. I said... Wow, okay. Now, that's how much we're uneducated as car salespeople. The, even the people who, the 20%, we're not taught this. Thank God we. I had to seek this information. I had to ask questions. 
But I said, you leased this, huh? He said, yeah, all I do, man, I do my driving. Every three years, I come back, get a brand new one. I don't have to worry about nothing. I don't worry about no negative equity, nothing. I said, okay, that's amazing. Then I saw what he was paying because I, I had to do his paperwork to ground the lease. I said, wow, that's a good car payment. That's only a couple dollars more than a regular lease would be. This is $175, $200 more per month. Because I had dealt with high mileage drivers coming in and trading their cars. If you're a high mileage driver, you know, if you've been doing loans, you're losing so much value. Every time you come in, you have 10 grand, 15 grand negative equity. You got to deal with that every transaction. So I guess he had dealt with that. And he, you know, maybe somebody educated him or maybe it was his idea. I'm going to just pay a couple more dollars. I'm going to get a great lease deal. And then I'm going to adjust that mileage to what I need. And that was great. So what we find is for 175, 200, whatever it is, $150 more, $100 more, you can add that high mileage to your lease. And like, imagine, imagine Greg, who I just posted with the 527, he's doing 12,000 miles a year. Imagine if he adjusted it to a 20,000 miles a year lease because he's a high mileage driver. Maybe his payment goes from 527 to 627, 650. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. He's paying a couple dollars more because he's using more. See, if there's anything that we've made clear, and I'll hammer it home by making the statement, you pay for your usage. We went over depreciation. We spent a lot of time talking about depreciation this show. You pay for your usage. So once you get that clear that whether I buy the car, I pay for what I, I pay for it, even if I don't use it. <laughs> so when I'm driving, I'm paying for it. Whether I own it, whether I lease, it's just which one allows me to pay less. And when you get a great lease deal, it allows you to pay less for your usage. So that's one option. That's for the short term person who wants one vehicle, high mileage, you're on the road, and you just want one vehicle, you're going to rotate every three years. The second option is for those who, I, uh, this, this is also in my book, None, everything I'm teaching you is in my book. Step by step, car shopping for people that hate car shopping. It's a digital book. You can go to my TikTok bio. It's part of our launch. It's 75% off. It's normally $97. You get to my TikTok and my Instagram bio, click that button. And then when you see, as long as the timer is not at zero, you get it for 75% off. You got 30 minutes. And if you've been there already, the timer is still running. So it doesn't stop. But uh, I call it, and, and Facebook, Facebook and YouTube, I'll post the link again for you guys. For those of you who just jumped on and you can go right there and you can get your copy for 75 percent off so one strategy for short-term buyers and look this is short term if you the eight-year rule doesn't change if you're a high mileage driver but you're keeping your cars a long time you don't need to lease eight years let's say i'm a high mileage driver and i know i drive thirty thousand miles a year but I'm going to keep my car at least eight years. I'm just going to go out. I'm going to find something that will last me. And I'll just drive it, pay it off and bring it back. I'll sell it eight years later with 320,000 miles on it because that's highway miles. So I'll put I'll put that mileage on it in eight years and then I'm out and then I'm up out of there. Um, yeah, eight times three. Look, eight times three. 30,000 a year. It's 240,000. Let's see. Is that 240,000? 30,000 a year times eight years. 240,000 miles. Tons of cars out there that you can buy that'll do 240,000 miles in eight years. Tons of them. So I don't want you thinking about leasing if you're a high mileage driver, if you're a long term person. If the car is a long term purchase, you don't need the lease. You need to make sure you're getting a great car. But if you're not keeping your cars eight years, then yes, the first one is a high mileage strategy, uh, high mileage lease strategy, and the second is to balance it out. Because some people say, Deshaun, I'm a high mileage driver, like that guy. Let's take it back to that guy. He might say, Yeah, man, I want a nice car though. I got my Honda. I mean, my Hyundai. I drive that for work. I'm on the road with that seventy thousand miles in three years. But you know what? I want to have a nice car. What would normally happen is he, you pay your car off first. This is in my book. I call this. Two cars, one payment. So the first car is you own. You, it's a it's a purchase. It's not a lease. And if you have a car already that you have a loan on, you pay that car off. 
And then that becomes your mileage car and you go lease something nice. So now you got your mileage car that you're doing probably 15,000 a year on. And then you're going to lease something nice for 10 or 15,000 and you'll split the mileage. It's one car payment. It's a nice car. And then it's the mileage car. And so either one of those two strategies, you pick which one you target. And they're both phenomenal strategies. It depends on the person. I've had people that do both. Both of those are better than anything else that you've been doing. Anything. Both of those keep the money in your pocket, keep payments low, give you a nice car, protection. That's it. All right. Okay. All right. I think that's good for now. We've been on here for, uh, all right, let's do a couple more. Let's do, uh, let's do, all right. Go another five minutes. All right, let's go. Now, sometimes we want to jump off, but we in the heat of things, man. I love it. Everybody's enjoying it. Let's see if uh, we got anything on Instagram. I see Instagram watching. I'm looking for a question over here. Uh, how can I get rid of a 2015 Q5 with an oil consumption issue that was skipped for the recall? Mm. You got an old, no, it's not old. It's not that old. Got a nine-year-old Audi. Uh, is the car paid off? Is the car paid off? Because I teach something called the rule of 72 on the 10th birthday. Rule of 72 means we don't take a loan longer than seven uh, than six years, 72 months, and then we have to have the car paid off by the 10th birthday. So when things like this happen, which, you know, we can't predict them, these cars are machines, we figure, you know, um, the nightmare story, I see you said it's paid off. That's great. We don't want issues on a car we still have a loan on. That's the whole goal. So you want to get the car paid off. So what I would do is um, you fix the car. You know, I would I would really try to find a, a, a European mechanic that I could trust, ask around. Um, when I worked for Mercedes, I used to send people to a, uh, he was a retired, not a retired, he used to work for Mercedes. He started his own shop. And his work was probably 35, 40 percent of what the dealerships would charge. Because when the cars, when the car has problems, y'all, it's, it's almost worthless. It's hard to sell. You got to go through issues. I mean, a nine year old Audi is not an old vehicle. So if you get with the right mechanic, you get with the right service shop and somebody who who, who knows Audis and this is what they do then you know what is it going to cost me to fix this then you could sell it because those fixes i don't like putting money into a car that i'm not going to get back so when you think of some people say deshaun well my car has scratches you think i should like get them touched up well the same money it costs you to get them touched up is probably the same money you're going to increase the value if it costs you 900 dollars to get them touched up maybe the car is worth 900 more that means it was for nothing you want to do stuff where if I put two thousand in the car, it's worth six thousand. It's worth four thousand more. It's worth that two thousand I put in increases the value of the car four thousand or six thousand dollars. In which case, there are many issues that you know engines, transmissions, you know head gaskets. These are things that make your car's value almost nothing. So if you can get those things done cheaply with a local mechanic or a local reputable shop and you get like a rebuilt part a part from a salvage yard and you get the car running then you could sell out of it because what you're doing is you're selling low you're selling at its lowest value which who wants to do that so if you can't do that then your only option is to sell as is the car is paid off so thank god you were financially wise in that you don't have a car payment on it um so you could sell it but it's worth a lot less with the issue. So it's a matter of, do you want to put the money into it? Hold on, it, uh, we just got a battery low over here. So do you want to put the money into the car, increase the value and then sell out of it? Or do you want to just sell it with a low value? That's the choice you got to make. It's going to depend on your resources. But everyone here, if you got a car that has no warranty, you should, you should, be, you should have a local mechanic on your team. You should have a local mechanic on your team for sure. It's just, it's so necessary. So necessary. Okay. Listen, we'll be back. We're going to do a lot more of these. Um, whenever you see me live, um, 
if you are on my email list, which means you have my cheat sheets, if you have my book, you're on the email list, you'll get notifications of when I'm live. Everyone who just jumped on everything that I've taught in the show, everything you're going to hear. When you watch my social media videos, that's all in my book. It's just in a step-by-step way. We don't hold the information back. I'm not going to hold it back. It's just, do you want it all in one spot? Do you, you could go through all the social media videos there for all different people. High mileage drivers, leases, buying, cash buyers, used cars. It's the, so you can cycle through all of those and put it together. You can you can jump on the live and we'll do this Q&A and I'll lay out strategy. Use it. But if you like to shine, I want everything in one spot where I could just follow it step by step. That is my new book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's a digital book. It'll be in your inbox in less than 10 minutes. Um, and it's called Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. And it's 75% off as part of our launch uh, for 30 minutes. So if you haven't visited yet, you can get yours. If you did visit, the timer started. Once it gets to zero, price goes back up to $97, which is still a great price. We've had people pay $97, not bad an eye. Because my goal for the book is for it to be one of the most valuable books you've ever bought. I don't have a lot of, I got a bunch of books up here. I really don't have a lot of them that have made me money. I have a lot on different subjects, but my, I want you, when you look at my book, I want you to be like, this book right here has made me money and will make me and my family money for years. So go get your 75% off in my TikTok bio, grab your copy. In my Instagram bio, grab your copy. Or if you're on Facebook, you can just go to Deshaun'sBook.com. I'll put the banner back up. Or you can scan the QR code and get your 75% off. So we will be back. Anyone you know, your co coworker, hey, I'm shopping for a car soon. Invite them to the live broadcast. Invite them to my channel so that we can make sure that you guys are saving all the money you should be saving and you know where the hidden money is in your car deals. All right? And shopping the new way. Stop negotiating and start making people bid. All right. I'll see y'all in the next show. God bless y'all. Uh, on any of those platforms, you know, uh, occasionally I share graphics and I share things that I can't do on TikTok. So if you're over there, come on over. But let me know who's car shopping right now. If you are shopping for a car right now, or you will be in the next 12 months. Welcome to Car Shopping Secrets. We're going to be going deep. My name is Deshaun, the auto advisor. I spent, um, uh, I was in the car business from 2006 to 2020, left in co left uh, after COVID. And I have been spending all my time since then making sure that uh, people like you know how to save all the money on cars that you need to. So we'll give people on YouTube a chance to come in. Um, Hunt, I see you. What's a good car to get an SUV? It's it's too many. You, I always tell people, don't ask people about their opinions on cars. That's where data is. Uh, that's where you need data, Google. Uh, a lot of people don't realize there's somewhere along the lines of 40 million used cars sold a year in a healthy market, 17 million new cars. Um, I think sometimes if you're not in the industry, if you're obviously you guys are, are just, you know, you're, you're, you're car buyers, you're, you know, so you don't really know the magnitude of the industry. There's, you know, 50 to 60 million cars, really 60 million plus cars sold a year. So you can't ask, you can't, you could, but it's not a good practice to ask a person their opinion on a car. Now, what you should do is figure out kind of the category of car you want, pick one, and I always say, look at the competitors. So if I'm looking at uh, for a four-door sedan and I like the Toyota Camry, then I'm going to look at the three, four, five top competitors of the Toyota Camry. And uh, that's usually enough to help you go deep on, you know, deep from there. So hold on. Let me just make sure we all good. Can everybody hear audios clear? Is everybody like, give me ones in the chat if audio is clear. I just want to make sure. Hey, Ty said, I just purchased your book this morning. I was just reading. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Enjoy it. Use it. And please make sure you reach out to me um, with your success story. DM me. I can't wait to hear how much you save, how much you pay, what deals you get. Um, everybody, my new book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, is uh, 
for the launch of it, we're doing 75% off. It's normally a $97 digital book, but you can go to my TikTok bio, you can go to my Instagram bio, or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com and you can get your copy for the next 30 minutes for 75% off. That is our gift. That's my launch. That is like, let's get this information in the world. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Confirming audio is clear. So uh, everybody just start typing your questions and we'll go at least an hour. I want to do just uh, some serious questions. I thought I had my document open and I didn't. So while y'all are posting your questions, um, give me give me 15 seconds to do this. But start start just posting them. Um, here we go. Uh, all right and 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 if you love great information then tag a friend because they're going to be mad at you if they find out you were following me and you were using what i'm teaching you and you were saving all this money and they went out here to buy a car and you didn't tell them about me they will certainly be mad at you <laughs> all right hold on i just had to post a comment i want to make sure everybody know on facebook and on youtube uh, I want to put the link for you guys to get your uh, to get your book now at the uh, at the seventy five percent off. So here we go. There it is. All right, let's get to it. Um, is it good to get the warranty? It depends on the car, Lucas. You cannot look expensive repair. Here's the rule of thumb for warranties, y'all. You only need a warranty when the car has expensive repairs or a history of breaking. Again, that goes back to the data. These are little three minute things we do on Google. Literally, Google the car you are looking at. Uh, 2020, always put in the year. 2019, um, you know, I don't know, Hyundai, whatever. Repair cost. Uh, um, when you see that, I have something I do before we ever look at a car. You want to type in that same term, longevity. Longevity will tell you the long term of if that car has problems, the data you want to skim that first couple, that first page on Google. If you see a bunch of articles that say problems, electric problems, reliability rating, that's enough for you to know. Now, a problem car is different from a car that has high maintenance costs or high cost of repair. Usually import cars, um, uh, anything that's coming from overseas in terms of Europe, you usually have higher costs for parts. That means when something breaks, it's more expensive to fix. The higher the cost of repair, the more likely a warranty will pay for itself because that's what you want, right? Shout out to the sharers. Thank you. I see a bunch of people who hit that share button. I appreciate you all. What you want when you get a warranty is for it to pay for itself. Not saying you want to use it, but you don't want to spend three grand or two grand or four grand on a warranty and then you don't use it. Yeah, it's like an insurance policy. That's really what it is. It's an insurance against, you know, repairs. But at the same time, you don't want to spend four grand and you end up not using it. You could have basically kept that money and then just protected yourself, um, you know, if something goes wrong. But if your car has a high repair cost and, um, and expensive parts, then yeah, warranty is worth it. I used to tell people when I was with Mercedes Benz, some of you know, I worked for Mercedes Benz for five years, General Motors for five years. I would tell anyone who was purchasing a Mercedes Benz and they were going to keep it a long time, buy as much warranty as you could afford. Um, let's go. All right. We're going to be going to questions all over. I got Instagram over here. So as everybody come, I'm looking at all my screens to make sure I'm getting questions from every platform. Can you discuss the junk fees the dealers try to add? So the only way you can avoid the junk fees is you need to be purchasing, well, doing your shopping from home. You can't deal with junk fees when you get to the dealership. It's too late. You've wasted your time. You need to be at home, which is what I teach. If y'all don't know my strategy, my basically my, my system I invented for car shopping is called Cars From Home. That's what it's called. 99 to 100% of your purchase with a new car or a lease can be done from home. About 90% with a used car can be done from home. You can't do 100% from home. Who knows why? Who knows why you can't do 100% of your transact? A new car, fresh from the factory, lease or purchase, brand new, you can do that from home. But who knows why you can't do a 100% from home deal on a used car? Anybody who, anybody who chimes in with the right answer, you got a free copy of my book. 
because this, this, this requires a little critical thinking, but if you think about it, it'll come to you. It'll come to you. Let's go. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking at all. I'm going to give, I'm going to, look, I'm going to count down from 10. If we don't get an answer, then I'm going to tell. 10, nine, it could be a lemon. That's close. That's close, but not quite. Yes, exactly, H2H. DM me. Wait a minute. I don't know who came first. It might have been, I see H2H, but then we had uh, Rich Perry who came in. Both of you DM me, and you both got a free copy of the book. Because, yes, test drive. With a used car, you see, with a new car, let's say some of you are shopping for a brand new car right now. We go test drive that car. That's actually in step four of my shopping process. I have a seven seven step process. My book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. Step four is when we go test drive the brand new car. You can't do that with a used car. You have to, you have to test drive a used car when you're there. And the reason why it's always the last step is because we don't want to waste our time. When we are shopping for a used car, we are always verifying junk fees as a step from home. And then once we verify that this used car is the best price in the market, that this used car is it has everything we want and it's the lowest deal in the market, it has no bogus fees, then we go to the dealership, test drive it, lock it up. That's the speed of a used car deal. But but all of that upfront work must be done or you're going to end up wasting your time. Some of you, be honest, you've walked away from deals. I don't like walking away from deals. You know why? You wasted my time. So I don't as much as I love the fact some of you say, Deshaun, I'm just um, I will walk away from a deal if it's I love that. That's good because you're not going to. I'd rather you walk away than put yourself in a bad situation. But at the same time, when you get real good, like I want you to get, when you really use what I'm teaching y'all, you won't ever have to walk away. Because when you have to walk away, somebody wasted your time and you still need a car. All right, let's go. Um, even though, wait, hold on. Hold on. You can't do two part questions, y'all. Type all your questions in one thing because you can't do like I'm not I can't do two part like you 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 continued your question in like two or three comments. Um, let's go here. Leased a new car six weeks ago. Now find out it doesn't have all that was promised. Dealership ignores com nothing you could do, Mike. Nothing you could do. Look, see now. I, look, I'm not in the business of lying to you. One thing you're going to learn about me is I'm going to tell you the hard truth. Now, I'm going to also tell you what you need to do to make sure things like that never happen again. But if some see, because somebody who, who somebody who you will talk to in a car dealership will say, no problem. Come on in, Mike. We'll swap you out of that car. They're about to the that's called two paychecks. We already paid. We already got paid on that car that you didn't like. And unfortunately, you didn't know enough at the time to verify what was in it. Understood. We could say it's not your fault. No one told you. That's fine. This is an industry of wolves. We get it. But it doesn't change the fact a paycheck was made when you bought that car. And now come on in. We'll swap you out of that. Take that negative equity, which you're going to have because you can't buy a car or lease a car in six weeks. And go train the depreciation, the car, whatever you pay for the car, the current value of it is 20% less than that at this particular time. Who knows that? You buy a car for 30 grand right now, the day you buy it, this is why I go deep on these lessons on depreciation. You must know. Could y'all shout out the likes on TikTok? Could y'all just start tapping the screen if you're gonna spend 10, 15 minutes with us? Let's let TikTok know that we um that we that we got something over here that more people need to see. If you just start tapping the screen, you'll see the lights go up. You have to sit with that car or you have to realize the losses. And realizing the losses means I'm, I got a car. I'm OK. But if I go and switch this car, I'm losing 20 percent. Now, they might hide it in a payment and get you into a payment. That's like, oh, I could afford that. But it don't change the fact. And, you know, you know who would never do this, who would never switch a car that quick. Cash buyers. See, because when you pay cash for a car, thanks, Gary. 
you actually see, dag, I laid out 40 grand of my cash. Now you come back in six weeks. Hey, man, this car doesn't have the big, you know, the um, the camera in the back that I thought it had. Man, I want to switch out of this. When they do that deal and they show you what that car is worth, you're going to say, nah, you know what? I did. I, I'll stick without the camera. Sorry. I'll get it next time. Cash buyers, because when you move cash, the numbers are so transparent, there's no room to hide any losses. But with payments, payment buyers, oh yeah, it's the same numbers. That's the that's the that's the bad part. It's the same numbers. The numbers are equally as bad, except we hide it in a payment. We'll stretch out the loan. Hey, look, we switch you. You got the car you want, you got the options you wanted. And your payment is only $30 more per month, but it's $30 more per month for another year. So we going you, you, it's a horrible financial deal. So all I can tell you is you can do what you want. You're a grown adult, but I, I'm an auto advisor. I'm, I'm a, I consider myself to be someone who protects the public's money, but you got to be willing to listen and say, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I got to bite the bullet because you can't switch cars that fast. I appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Said I just got the book. Thank you. Enjoy it. Use it. Everybody, my book, uh, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, is officially out. It's a digital book. The reason it's a, di a digital book because I need to be able to update it. Things change. Room went out of business two months ago. We got to make sure we update these books. And if I had 100,000 books in print, you all will be sitting there with books that were obsolete or at least a piece of that strategy. Anytime you see room, it'd be like, oh, room's out of business. So digital books, we literally update the file and my scripts are in there. Anything I want to update, I could do it. And then you open it up and you got the new version. So so everybody could get theirs for 75% off in my TikTok bio or my Instagram bio or go to Deshaun'sBook.com. 75% off for um, 30 minutes while we're on this blog. If you're seeing this, then it's still available for 75%. Um... Bought the course, but haven't gotten my copy yet. Just email support. Charlotte, here's the thing, y'all. I have a very, I have a specific email for people who purchase stuff from me. Obviously, y'all can see we got like 400 people on here right now. Tons of people who I'm interacting with. But when you purchase something from me, the first thing I give you is a support email. I have a support team. Don't get me in DMs. Hey, Deshaun, I didn't receive. Just email the support team. Because most times I'm not going to see the DM. So please do not DM me about a product you purchase. Always email the support. And most times we've done this for three years. It's just a letter that was missed, that was wrong in the email. <laughs> that's all. That's the problem. Typing fast. Oh, timer. I want to get to 75% off. A letter is wrong. And then your, your email doesn't come. And we'll get it. Sandra will get it right to you. All right. For the 1.5% lease rule. Is it MSRP plus taxes and fees and first payment, or is it just MSRP plus taxes and fees? So one percent. Here's what you when you're shopping for a lease. I have this rule I call the 1.5 percent rule. It's so you to know a bad lease deal. A bad lease deal is when you take you always get your lease quotes. Remember this, y'all. Remember this. It's all in my book. It'll be on a replay if you're watching this this episode replay. You take the MSRP of the car. The MSRP is the total. Let me show y'all this. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show y'all what a window sticker looks like. Um, it's called a Maroni label. You call it a window sticker. And here's, I want you to know what the total price is. You have to know because this is what you base your, um, this is this is how you shop your lease deals and, and measure the value. So check this out. Uh, where is it? Here, boom. TikTok. Y'all can't see this, but if you're on Instagram, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, you'll see this. We'll eventually be able to plug the stream into TikTok, but the way they have it set up right now, it's uh it's hard to do. Though it, we we're, we're working with support now to be able to do it. All right, so y'all see this right here. See the total manufacturer suggested price forty two six fifteen. That is what it's based off of. Don't look at this price because that does not include any destination charges destination is to get the car from the factory to the dealership you want to look at that bottom total manufacturer suggested retail price all right now you are going to take that number every brand new car in this country has this sticker on it has that price 
Now, you get your lease quotes. We get our lease quotes with only first month's payment out of pocket. This does not mean, we, yes, we sometimes put money down. Yes, we sometimes put the taxes. But for the purpose of getting our quotes, we are getting our quotes with first month's payment total out of pocket. And you notice I'm not saying down payment. People will say, oh, I'm going to put first payment down only. Don't use down payment because in the industry, y'all know I was there for 15, for, what, what, 2006, 14 years. And I'm still in it technically, but there's a term down payment doesn't include tax, doesn't include fees, doesn't it's ambiguous. Like it has multiple meanings. And when you leave things like kind of like, oh, uh, to, 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 for, for a person to figure out, they're going to eventually, who's had a person say 2000 down. And then when they give you the offer, they say, okay, 2000 now, all you got to do now is come up with another 3000 for your taxes. And you're like, whoa. I told you I only wanted to put 2000 down. Who's had that happen? Type of one, if you've had that happen. The reason is you're not using um, specific wording that can't be confused. First month's payment, total out of pocket. Now, once you, now you get that quote, always 12,000 miles per year. Some of you may not know you had, you can do, you could do almost any mileage on a lease. You could do 15,000 miles per year, 20,000 miles per year, 25. You pick the mileage on the lease. You pick the mileage on the lease. So in the case of getting the quotes, 12,000 miles per year, first month's payment. And now when you get your quotes, what you're doing is you're dividing the payment they give you into the MSRP. And that's going to give you like let's say for that particular car, the payment's 500, they give you a payment 500, you divide that by the MSRP 42,500, and now you have 0 0.0117. You multiply that by 100, again, this is in the book. So you can sit here and look, some of you might say this is a little complex. You do realize this is the second most expensive purchase behind a car. This, I mean, behind a house. This is as simple as it gets. It's just, you've been taught You've been programmed. You should make thirty, fifty, hundred thousand dollar decisions without even knowing the math of the of the transaction. So we have to break that program, and we got to unlearn that. Because you would never sit here with a house, and if we went over some simple numbers and said, "Make sure you do this when you're shopping for your house," you'd be like, "All right, cool," because you realize the magnitude of the transaction. But we've been programmed to make a fifty thousand dollar car buying transaction without going over these numbers. So once you do that, you come up with a percentage, 1.17, 1.5. Once you get over 1.5%, it's no value in leasing that car. Leasing is a value play. You're going to see if there's 500 cars, it's 500 different lease programs. And leasing, the goal of a lease is to beat depreciation, beat depreciation that you would pay when you buy. If you bought a car and it lost 50% of its value in the first three, four, three years, some cars, the Escalade was one of the highest depreciating cars. You would lose that value. That's your, it's gone. Your goal with a lease is to drive the best car for little money, small money. That's why you don't pay attention to these commercials. So that's a, that's a quick overview of how the 1.5% rule works. You're, 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 it's based on the percentage of the car you're paying. And it's it's really, it was a, it was a, it was, it was a spin-off of the 1% rule, which kind of every savvy lease buyer knows the 1% rule. If your lease was 1% of the, if your monthly payment was 1% of the MSRP, it was a steal. Don't even ask any question, don't negotiate anymore. You stole the car, get up out of there before they change their mind. That was the 1% rule. That's been around for decades. But people didn't know. People knew what an incredible deal was. They didn't know what, what, a, what a bad deal was. And that's how the 1% rule, that, that's, how the one, that's how I invented the 1.5% rule. Paying too much for a vehicle, you're giving back. All right? Um, look, and look, this is a problem. Vivian, um, I purchased the wrong SUV. I desire to purchase the right one. Need to unlearn trade it. Look, all you can do, y'all, is, is assess your step two of my process is we have to do an equity assessment. If you have a car you want to replace, you need to see the numbers. Here's what you need to do. 
and I'm in cash buyers again. All the cash buyers on here, this is easy for you because most times you're not going to go trade that car in in a year or two that you just bought or six months because you didn't like it because you know the loss is going to be it's going to be too big to swallow. But payment buyers who are paying four hundred a month, six hundred a month, three fifty a month, you tend to think I can just go switch cars, no problem, and you don't realize how they're manipulating your loans to be able to get you in these cars with the lost value. So the only thing you can do is call your bank, find out exactly what you owe, and then go to the six websites that I teach you to get your car offers from, who pay, histor historically, they pay more than dealers. CarMax.com, Carvana, Driveway, Auto Nation, Sell My Car, Kelly's Blue Book, Instant Cash Offer, those last two are dealerships bidding, and those first three are online car buyers bidding. So we get everyone to bid. These guys fight relentlessly to buy cars. You can do Car Guru, sell my car. And what that's going to do in about 20 minutes while you sit at home, it'll tell you the, the, the best, the, the highest value for your car. And you look at what you owe and you look at the highest offer. And if you see that the highest offer is five grand or seven grand less than what you owe, then that's your loss you're going to have to take to get into a new car. And some of you, that's going to make you say, you know what, I think I'll deal with this for a little bit. Anyone who buys cars, if drive time buys cars, anyone who's buying cars, I am, I want their bid. Because how are we able to get incredible? I've been teaching hundreds of people that I know personally, um, that I have talked to, that I work with personally, thousands that I have never met get incredible deals. Some of them email me and I never met them, but they've used my stuff. They've either got the book or maybe they just pieced together all my videos. I got a lot of videos on a lot of different subjects. How do they get these deals? It's because they've mastered bidding, getting bids. The people who are losing in the old way of car buying, you're doing this back and forth with one person, maybe two. And, no, and, and if the person you're going back and forth with is dangerously overpriced, there's no way you can win. So when you're looking at someone who, who their price is already five or six or seven, some of these dealerships had incredible markups that were 10 grand overpriced. I was helping people get the new Broncos when people were paying 10 and 15 grand over sticker, people were getting them with no markups. So you literally had a person who was paying 10 grand more than a person, another person, because they just didn't know how to find the dealerships without the markups. And it's the same problem now. Deshaun, how do I find the dealerships with the big discounts? It's called multiple bids, which means you got to sit at home and you do this from your computer while you let these people try to earn your business. You're never going to do it in a dealership. You're never going to do it in a dealership because you don't know who you're dealing with. 80% of dealers, I'm sorry to tell you all, are overpriced. 80%. There's a 20% of dealers will blow the competition away and beat everyone's prices. 80% are extremely overpriced. And if you're in that dealer because it was the one closest to you or it was the you can't win. So you must start learning to get bids. Um, upside down, $8,000 on my lease because I bought when inventory was low. Sorry to hear that. How can I get out? This, this is exactly what I told you. There is no minimum loss. All you can do is what I just said five, three minutes ago. Find out how much you owe. Go to those car buying sites. The, these people pay the most for cars. See, so you, you're not going to go into a dealership and say, how much will you give me for this car? And think that's your best. They might say your car is only worth 18 to us, but one of these other buyers might offer you 21. So if you don't find these other buyers through bids, you're now shooting yourself in the foot and making your negative equity even greater. Why? Because you didn't go to the highest bidder. You went to this dealership. So you want to find out where your position is you go here, but I mean, how do you how you how you upside down on a lease? A lease has an intern. It says, "Yo, thirty six months, boom, 
you, it's it's not really you, you can't be upside down on a lease. A lease is not made to have equity. If you're a super low mileage driver or if your car has great resale value, sometimes we sell our cars at the end. We make tons of money sometimes selling our leases, but that's not what you're getting a lease for. You're getting a lease to drive a car for a super low payment, a brand new car that's reliable, no no problems. So uh, um, how are you upside down? Kind of elaborate on that. Um, I'm lost. My lease is up in May and want to finance my car, but no sure how it works. Why do you want to buy your lease? Why do you want to buy your lease? You, so you're saying, all right, my lease is up. I've had this. I've had a car. Now I want to buy a used car. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying, Mr. Knickerbocker. I want to buy my used car. It's all you're doing. I want to give you a clear understanding when you buy your lease, all you are doing is buying a used car, except you don't have to go look at the market and you don't have to go look at cars and you don't have to look at websites. You don't have to go inspect it because it's your car, but it is no different than buying a used car. So if you're going to buy a used car, there should be good reasons why you say, I'd rather buy a used car versus staying in an aggressive lease where I'm driving a new car. Now, I'm going to ask you all a question. Who want everybody on here? How many years are you planning on keeping your next car? Type it into the chat. Oh, we killing the likes. Thank you, TikTok. Appreciate y'all. See the likes running up. Keep tapping the screen. Thank you so much. How many years do you are you keeping your next car? So I can follow you to get more information. Of course. Three years. Okay. Seven to eight for a non-lease. Now, I'm not sure what that means. Five to eight years. Okay, I see you. Forever. No, <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, let's see. Okay, five. No more than three years. Eight. Till it dies. All right, I like that. Six. Okay. So, if your answer to this question, let me, listen. Jay says seven, done paying this year. So, check this out. Forget about the payments of the car. Forget about whether you paid cash for the car. You know how they tell us your biggest expense is taxes? We're trained to see our normal expenses, but we don't understand that our biggest expense with a car is depreciation. I buy a car for 30000 park it outside. Don't drive it one mile. Come outside a year later. I never touch the car. Is it worth 30000 I bought a brand new car, put it right in my driveway. I didn't touch it. I never even went in it. I just made sure I started it so the engine would keep running. I go out a year later. Is it worth 30000 Not anymore. How about this? I buy a new car. I go out the next 30000 I go out the next day. Is it worth 30000 Your biggest expense is the one that you have not been trained to see. It's depreciation. So you're losing 20%. But see, you're making all, see, when you, you, you see now what y'all are going to start doing now that this information is coming to you, you're going to start making decisions, taking into account depreciation. Before all you do is take into, make decisions based on payment and what I want and can I afford it? No, because the depreciation curve looks like this, y'all. From the day you buy the car, the car's value is dropping like this on this angle. Steep. Now, when you get to about seven, eight years, here's what starts to happen. It levels out. Some of you have, who has a car outside now that's nine years or 10 years old or more? Type, type me if you, uh, if you have a car outside your house right now. That is nine or 10 years old. Everybody, make sure you get my book. This, If you want everything I teach in one place. If you want everything I teach in one place. You don't have to remember this stuff if you have the book, because the book is your action manual. 75% off in my TikTok bio. It's a digital book. You can use it. It's, it's, your, it's literally like it'll be your greatest weapon. 75% off car shopping for people that hate car shopping. Go to my TikTok bio. Go to my Instagram bio or go to Deshaun'sBook.com, or you can scan the QR code on the screen if you're watching on a television. So that if you if you have a car that's outside that's eight or nine or 10 years old, you notice 
what it was worth a year ago is just about what it's worth today, right? Right? Somebody said 16 years. Go ahead, Suzanne. It's what it was worth a year ago, what you could have sold it for a year ago, is just about what it's worth today, right? You, The depreciation curve has leveled out. And what y'all need to know is if you're not buying a car to get to that point, you should not be buying, you should be leasing. Some of you say, Deshaun, I have no desire to keep a car that long. I have no seven years, eight, four years. Five. The name of the game is in, in the book. Thank you so much, Spicy. I appreciate it. You're going to see. I created something called the eight year rule because the eight year rule allows you to say until I get to eight years, I'm not out of the woods of depreciation yet. So I'm not buying this car. If you are buying a car and you have no plans to get to where the depreciation curve levels out, you're selling a car while it's drastically losing value. That's why you're always mad when you see how much your car is worth. Guarantee you, none of the people who have a car that's 9, 10, 12, 16 years old, nobody's upset when they see that the car is worth 3000 If they sold it on Facebook Marketplace, I could get 3000 for it. We don't sell those cars to dealers. Don't give them to dealers for 500 or 300 or 100 bucks. Don't do that. They're better off going to a family member or they're better off going to a Facebook marketplace. You know, young person pay you a couple thousand dollars and they can have a car because there's still value in the car. It's just not value to a dealership because you've used up most of the value. So if you so that's why it's called the eight year rule. Your question is, is when you say, should I buy? Should I lease? This is the most important question in a car deal. It's the first question. It's the only thing you should be asking. What I just asked y'all for the rest of your life, every time you or your family member needs a car, that should be the first question. How many years are you going to keep the car? If they tell you, man, I'm going to keep it like, uh, you know, somebody over here said, till it dies. Perfect. You purchased that car then. If they tell you, man, probably three, four years, you think about the depreciation curve and they're, what they're saying is, I'm going to buy the car here, that thing going to drop in value like crazy, and then I'm going to sell out of it here. Horrible business move, horrible financial move. I'm going to sell while this thing is dropping like a daggone rock in the ocean, I'm just going to sell out of it. With a lease, and we don't want to buy, le you don't look at these commercials. Those are not lease deals. Those are marketing to try to get people to come in. And no, no, the, the best lease deals, you'll never do. You'll never see them advertised. Check this out. Look at, look at, uh, look at, look at uh, Greg's lease deal on his, uh, on his Jeep he just got. I'm going to show it to you. If you're on TikTok, again, we'll be here soon. I'll be able to stream and show my screen, but we don't have, TikTok has a little bit of a different technology. Where we put on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you guys can see this. Look at Greg's lease deal, y'all. Greg got a $56,000 vehicle. It's a Kia Win EV6 Win with the tech package. He's paying $527 a month. That's a under 1% lease. Under 1%. Gave him $527, no money down. Walked in, saw a fifty-six thousand dollar car. Just to give you an idea of what a fifty-six thousand dollar car would normally cost, that would every five thousand dollars on a on a uh, every five thousand dollars on a car loan. So when you look at a car, if it's ten thousand dollars, every five thousand dollars is about a hundred bucks a month on a five-year loan. So when you look at a ten thousand dollar car, it's about two hundred bucks a month. Twenty thousand dollar car. About four four hundred bucks a month. It's important you know this. Even if you have bad credit, you need to know what it should cost with good credit. How much a loan should be. You shouldn't be looking at a fifty thousand dollar car saying, "Man, can you get me? Can you get me to six hundred? Because they know you don't understand the numbers, so they might stretch you out into a nine year loan and say, "Yeah, I got you to six hundred. Oh, great! But you're in a nine year loan, so you're going to pay for that car and another car just like it. So it's important for you to know." That car right here that Greg got that's on the screen would normally be $1,200 a month. Once he factors in his tax, you so even if he got some money off of it, say he got the $7,500 electric car rebate, he's still about a, he's still over $1,000 a month for five years. He's paying $527.
Think about when he pulls up next to the person who purchased and then looks at him and says, oh, we got the same car. Man, okay, how much you paying? Yeah, man, it's payments. It's a nice car, man. I'm paying about, a, about a, you know, 1050. You know, it's it's fifty thousand dollar car though. You know, oh man, I'm paying five twenty seven. Dad, how you do that? What you put like thirty grand down? No, I lease it. I lease it. I'm gonna drive it for three years, then I go get me something else. Oh yeah, but I, I own this though. I'm purchasing it. You don't own it. First of all, the bank owns it. You think you own it? Miss three payments. You find out. So, but no, I'm a. You know, I got the loan. You know, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a flip out of it. You know, yeah, but a thousand a month is coming out of your household. And 527 a month is coming out of mine. They're not advertising these deals on these vehicles. You will never see a great lease deal advertised. So from now on, don't pay attention when you see a commercial that says, oh, lease this with all this money down. Most of the leases you're, you're going to see me show you that my people get and that I want you getting and that I want you DMing me saying, Deshaun, look what I got, are shot with First payment total out of pocket, no money additional. And then we choose if we're going to put additional money down, if we want to lower the payment. But these will never be advertised. These will never be advertised. Great deals are never advertised. Great deals are made in private where the managers just, all right, just do it. Take it. Dang, that was an ugly deal, but hey, it's okay. Let's get, we'll make money on somebody else. That's great deals. All right. Let's get back. Let me put the banner back up. Let's keep the questions going. Um, hold on. Let's hide that. Where's my banner? Boom. All right, here we go. Back to the comments. Back to the questions. Let's go. Shout out to the sharers. I see a lot of people sharing. I see a lot of new followers, a lot of new subscribers. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the family. This is what we do over here. Talk about cash again, please. Did you say it's not a good idea? Debbie, it's a good idea only if you are going to First of all, you want to ask yourself, what am I doing with my money? Now, if you're making money on your money and to the tune of, you know, six, eight, 10, 20 percent, you know, people who are making money on their money very rarely are going to put their car, their money in a car without analyzing it. Because think about it. If I got 30, let's say we're looking at a car that's 30 grand. Let me ask you all a question first and then we'll go deeper on this. Who was taught always pay cash for cars? Be honest, type a dollar sign if you were taught always pay cash for cars. I'm just going to, that's not wrong. I'm just going to give you another perspective that you should measure against. And I'm talking, I was fortunate enough to where when I worked for Mercedes Benz and when I worked for General Motors, I always worked in blue and white collar towns where I was dealing with people that made 30 grand, but I was also dealing with people that made 300 grand and millions. So I was, I was, that gave me a great perspective. So check this out. If a car is 30 grand and a person could keep their money invested and they're making money, you have to look at something called opportunity cost. So if I kept my money in the market, if I kept my money in real estate, whatever, if I invested this into this piece of property, what would that 30 grand be worth in five years? What are, what's my interest? What's my return? My net profit and when I look at putting that same 30,000 in a car instead of using the bank's money at two, three, three 3%, 4%, borrowing the bank's money at, at a low interest, but I'm using my money to make a higher return, I'm going to I'm going to net out positive. I'm going to net out with a gain. They're not going to put the money in a car because when they put 30 grand, not only is their 30 grand gone, they can't get it back, but that 30 grand car, how much is the car worth in five years so my i parked 30 grand in a car how much is that car worth in five years what 12 so my 30 grand that i just parked in that car in five years my 30 grand's worth 12. if i park this 30 grand in the market or in a property or in a, anything that's making me more money my 30 grand is probably going to make me another four, five, six grand, seven grand, depending on what I'm getting. And that's how they look at it. So there's no right or wrong. It really depends on what you're doing with your money and how much you can borrow the bank's money, what, what the banks charge you. If rates are high, seven, eight, 10%, then yeah, pay cash. 
But if rates are low or if the car you're looking at has like a 2% interest rate or 0% special, banks giving you cheap or free money, you can keep your money in your bank account or you can keep it invested and still get the car. So that's how people weigh out the cash. If, if, if it was from a straight up financial intelligence conversation, that's how that's the conversation. All of this always pay cash without considering these things. It's just like somebody called Dave Ramsey and said, hey, I, I, I built a $22 million real estate portfolio and I use some leverage. I don't over leverage. And Dave Ramsey was fascinated because Dave Ramsey pays cash for all his properties. So he's teaching everyone pay cash for the property. So when you're dealing with this young person who owns $22 million in real estate and it has a, a small amount of debt against it, a lot of equity, yeah, I mean, it's more than one way to skin a cat. And that's the only thing I don't like about what Dave Ramsey teaches. He does a great job in a lot of areas, but it's some areas that's too, that he, he's just not sharing all the options from financially wise people. So that's it. <laughs> that's more in the book. We talk about that in the book. I have deal structure for cash buyers in the book. This is all things that need to go in, y'all. And if you have an intelligent financial advisor, this is the things that they're talking to you about. All of this other stuff is meant to sell you something. And if they're selling you a car, there's no way they're telling you about this. Most are not. They're not trained to even notice, quite honestly. I feel bad for car salesmen because they come in with the right motives, but they're just not trained in any of this. They're not trained in depreciation. We don't get trained in resale value. We don't get trained in leasing. We don't get trained in, you know, uh, all the stuff we got to talk to the public about. So it's not like these car salesmen are just malicious. Um, some of them are. Many of them are. But a lot of them just don't know what the heck they're talking about because they got a job. And then in a week, they was like, they told me, they told me when I was 22 and shout out to my, but he was a nice guy. He said, get the customers to like you and then come to us for the numbers. It's like, okay, you can never do that in real estate. Like get them to like you and then let someone else do the numbers. Get the heck out of here. This is how we train people. So, all right, let's keep it going. Welcome to the new people. Shout out to the sharers. Uh, retire, getting money from an estate, no trade in, don't want to know what is the last, uh, want it to be the, all right, I guess that was a comment, not a question. What about the amount of the down payment? Does that matter when the payment is still going to be high? Um, well, down payment is always applied. Listen, y'all, very important. Down payment doesn't come into the picture until we already make sure we're getting a great deal on the car, which means it we paid a great price for the car. See, because sometimes we use affordability to, to measure a deal. No, no. Somebody could offer me a million dollar house right now and say, hey, it's yours. The mortgage is, in the, you know, we're going to sell it to you for 700000 It's a great deal. Not in my budget. You know what I'm saying? Affordability doesn't matter. Somebody could say, Deshaun, we're going to give you a Bentley right now. Normally, those these are two hundred fifty thousand. We'll give it to you for 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 one ninety. Okay, for now we'll give it to you for one fifty. We'll give you a hundred thousand off a brand new Bentley. Is it's a deal, right? Could we all agree uh, a brand new two hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bentley? They take off a hundred grand, sell it to us for one fifty. Can we all agree that's a deal, right? <laughs> it doesn't mean it's in my budget, so we can't use affordability to measure a deal. We measure a deal based on shopping offers. Now, once you come in, when it comes to down payment, we need to know before we ever think about a down payment, did we get a great price on the car? How we're gonna structure the loan and all of that, that's our business. That's between us, our bank and the budgeting. I, I go over this and, and this is in step three of my book. It's seven steps. For y'all who just jumped on, I have a new book. It's a digital book called Car Shopping for people that hate car shopping. Seven steps to saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships. Step three, we go over deal structure. That's when we're going over our banks. That's when we're talking about this, something I call a bank bidding war. We're going to have all these banks and credit unions bid for our business, but it doesn't happen before we find our car. All of the financing and the monthly payment terms, that happens independent from the dealership. You should not be going over your monthly payment terms with the dealership. Here's what the dealership you're going to buy the car for uh, from. This is what they do. Did they win the bid? That's it. 
you have a product, other dealers have a similar product or even the same product, and I'm shopping in a way where you're going to be bidding just like they are. All of you have a shot at my business. And whoever wins, congratulations. Has nothing to do with the loan, has nothing. It's the price of the car. So we do the same thing with a lease. I need to know my lease is under 1.5%. When I look at all those offers, you saw Greg, his lease was under 1%. I'm going to show you some other people who 1%, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1. I need to know I got the best deal in the market, which means the dealer won the bid. And then I'll look at, can I afford that payment? And sometimes you might say, wow, okay, this is an incredible deal. I'm just going to put a couple thousand down. I want to lower my payment about $70. I'm going to put down about $1,500. I'm going to put down about $2,000, lower my monthly payment. But if you don't understand this, now you're trying to buy your deal. Now you're going and saying, oh, how much is this car? Oh, it's $700 a month. All right, well, what if I give you, what if I put down like five? All right, well, we could get you to $590. All right, let's do it. Mm -mm. No. You're manipulating the loan. We ain't focused on the price of the car. We can't do that. And that's what, unfortunately, most of, most people have been trained to do. But we're not doing that anymore. So that's how we take into account down payments. It's on our terms. If you can get the car you want and you get the offer and then somebody wins the bid and there's no down payment necessary, you could you could afford the payment with your bank or with whoever wins. We'll talk about the bank bidding war. Remind me to talk about, you know, the bank bidding war. This is we get bids for everything. Remind me to talk about that. Somebody remind me before we wrap up. But um, if you can get a car in the budget, somebody wins the bid, no down payment, do it. But if you look and say, man, I got a deal and you want to lower your payment a little bit, that's when we that's when we do down payment. All right. Wonderful information. Keep going. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Let's say they bring you in and you don't like what they're saying. I, I, nobody's bringing me in. Maybe I didn't understand the question, but, you know, again, if y'all do it my way, you're in total control because now you're the prize. No one's bringing us in. Oh, the book. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Somebody said, where can I get the book? Because I hate dealerships. So look, it's called the book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. You can go to my TikTok bio, click that website, click the picture of me on TikTok or Instagram, you won't leave the broadcast and then just click the website and then you'll see a link that says new book 75% off and just click that and grab your copy. It's an instant download and it's a digital book because you'll see there's links in there. I have links to some videos. You're gonna be reading the book and you'll be like, I'll say, hey, if you want me to explain this to you in a short video, click this and then it'll take you to a video. All stuff we couldn't do with a print book. And again, as the market changes, any websites that I use change, you'll see my scripts are in there. Everything that I'm, you're going to be typing on website, that's all in there. Anytime I want to update that, I can do it quickly with a digital book. I can't do that with a physical book. So grab your copy or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com and um, and get your copy for 75% off um, for the next 30 minutes while we're on the broadcast. So, um, oh, what if they're trying to, oh, I get what you're saying, like trying to schedule an appointment. Skinner, that's normal. He said, what if they try to bring you in? Like, obviously, we know as soon as we get on the phone with a dealership, one of the first questions they're going to say is, when can you come in? First, that's why we're not on the phone with them. <laughs> now, the only time we are calling a dealership is when we're, we're going to sell our lease to a used car manager because we have a third party restriction. In that case, we're talking to the used car manager because the third party restriction limit who you can sell to. So we're going to get bids from used car managers. We're not talking to salesmen. You are not calling. There's nothing in my book where you should ever be calling, speaking to a salesman. Scheduling a test drive, possibly. But you're in for a test drive and you're out in 20 minutes. That's it. The way I teach you to schedule a test drive on a new car or a lease, you should be there for 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops, and you're gone. Thank you. Listen, I'm because... I'm, this is step four. It's something I call shopping, not buying. You've been trained to mix the two. Oh, I went shopping, ended up buying. We don't do that. Shopping for us is deciding what we want. Part of deciding what we want is the test drive. So once we decide what we want, we come home and we get offers from home. 
So in the kit, the only other time we're on the phone is when we're calling to verify that there are no fake fees on a used car that we see online. So when you get to uh, step five, um, we use us. I'm shop. I want you to shop on all the used car marketplaces because they all have different inventory. There's eight of them. Now, when you're on these websites, you're actually screening, narrowing these cars down, uh, narrowing them down based on title. I teach you how to do all this. The first thing you're looking for when you're narrowing it down is title. Then you go into uh, service records because if a car doesn't have good service records, it's eliminated. I know some of you said Deshaun, but what if they change the oil? and they didn't report it what if they did if we can't verify it then we are next next so we go from title to service records to accident history and then we get the original price of the car tell y'all how important this is my god who's bought a used car in their life i want you to type you if you have bought a used car in your life you no, we don't need to focus on CarMax. There's no advice on CarMax because CarMax is just one player in a big sea of who we do business with or give an opportunity to earn our business. We give CarMax an opportunity to buy our cars. And when we're shopping for a used car, they're one of the marketplaces where we look at their inventory. No person supersedes anything. So we don't need to spend time with CarMax or Carvana or a dealership like they're all just people who get an opportunity to earn our business and somebody's going to win. Nobody. We're, this is not a relationship thing. So. All right. So all of you who have purchased a used car in your life, watch this. One of the things that you didn't have, and if you did. Then, you know, I would I would say most people wouldn't wouldn't have it. The original window sticker from the car. So the way this is how most people overpay for a used car and how y'all are not going to do it anymore. When you are purchasing a used car, they have things that make you, they want to manipulate and show market value, market value, market value. Market value is nothing because yeah, there's only two words that matter when it comes to market value, below market, below market. All right below market as long as you are as long as you are with me as long as you're like man i want to use what deshaun said man i want to teach then you got to get familiar with these two things below market if i'm leasing i want a below market lease like greg got if i'm purchasing a new car i want a below market purchase on a new car if i if i'm buying a used car i want a below market used car. so market value forget what the market's paying now the original window sticker tells us what is in the car and how much the car was originally priced. And without that information, we can't make a great deal. Sorry to tell you. I'm going to give you an example with my Infinity truck. I bought an Infinity truck about a year ago. I'm on the marketplaces. I'm narrowing it down. I narrow it down I'm, uh, to my top four. My top four, they're all white. They're all you know similar, right? Mileage varies from 26,000 to, you know, probably low 30s. Um, I'm looking at all four of them. They're in a similar price range. This is where most people choose the wrong car. When you use, when you get the original window sticker, here's what happens. I pull the original window sticker. This can, this can sometimes be acquired through Carfax. Sometimes I got a secret strategy. I'll tell y'all now it's in the book, among other things, where you go right to the dealer's website because the marketplace might not give you the free um, Carfax, but the dealer has a most dealers have a contract with Carfax. So if you simply just click from the marketplace to the dealer site and find the actual listing on the dealer site, you'll see the daggone Carfax right there on the dealer site. Secret sauce. So now. I pull that and <laughs> I pull that Carfax and I see, okay, this car now Carfax doesn't have agreements with everyone to show the window sticker. But once I get the window sticker, I see this first infinity. Remember, they're all in a they're all in a similar price range. This first one is forty six thousand dollars brand new. It has this equipment. This next one is forty eight thousand dollars brand new with this equipment. 
This next one is $52,000 brand new, similar with that equipment. And this one that I ended up getting was $54,000 brand new. What does that mean? I got a bunch of features those other cars didn't have. I have packages that those other cars didn't have. So although we're sitting there, we're looking at our top choices and like, oh, they look similar. Yeah, they look similar until you get the original window sticker. And now this is how we get something called the true value percentage. I call this the true value percentage. It's based on the discount from the brand new price, not the discount that dealer's giving. Used cars, the dealer's discount doesn't matter because the dealer could discount, but if another vehicle is offered with no discount, but it's a deeper discount from the brand new price, you might be saving 40%. 50% from the brand new price. That's the best deal. You could sit up here and take two grand from a dealer and then you only have a small percentage of the brand new price. This is the most important thing. Once you verify it's a quality car, you cannot get a great used car deal without knowing what the car was priced at originally. You can't. And unfortunately, that's how we had people all through the pandemic who were buying used cars and paying almost the same price for them as when they were new. If you had the true value percentage, they could have avoided this because they would have said, wait a minute, I see you asking 28,000 for this car, but brand new, it was only, it was 29,500. Like it's three years old. True value percentage. That's how you buy a used car. That's how you lock in. Now we verify there's no bogus fees. We get to that dealership, we test drive, and we lock up that car. That's the low. That's a below market used car deal. Welcome. I see the sharers. Thank you for everybody who just came on. Everything I teach is out of my book. Everything that you see on my social media videos is out of my book. There is no the, the information exists the same place. So the if it's do you want it all in one spot? Because y'all see, we answered a bunch of questions from a bunch of different people. Used cars, leases new cars, cash buyers, all of these different types of people. That's how my videos are. So you might be watching all my videos and be like, oh, wow, which one's for me? High mileage drivers. If you want everything in one spot, you grab you grab your copy of Car Shopping for people that hate car shopping. In my TikTok bio, you won't leave a broadcast. Click the picture of me on Instagram, go to that website, and then just click it, grab your copy. 75% off for our uh, official launch or go to Deshaun'sBook.com. Because of your book, I was confident enough to negotiate a 1.2% deal based on the 1.5% rule on my new lease. Congratulations, Callie. See, that's the type of, see, you notice she didn't even tell us what kind of car she got because it because that's secondary. See, you, you, you notice Fernando said, just put the TikTok bio. He said, how do I get access to the book? Look, if you notice, y'all, I want y'all talking different and I want y'all doing different things. You notice when somebody gets a new car, they come, the first thing they tell you is, I got a new Honda. Hey, look, I just got a new Toyota, whatever. I just got a new Benz. They never talk about the money because secretly they're a little bit, nobody wants to, nobody wants to find out they made a bad decision. That's why I, that's why I, I admire all of you. But be, you're willing to hear the hard truth. You know there's some things I'm going to say to you that is not going to be what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear so that your next car deal and every car deal your family makes forever is a deal that you are you are totally confident with. And when you are confident in your car deals, you're going to be able to show the numbers. You're going to be able to go to the numbers and you're going to care really more you're going to care as much about the deal as you care about the car. So, Callie, congratulations. 1.2% lease is phenomenal. That's major value. That's thousands less than someone who's purchasing. And that's thousands less than most people are leasing that same car for because most people are not trained to get those kind of lease deals. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you um, for uh, allowing me to be a part of the journey. All right. All right. Let's go to let's go. Let's go two more. Uh, matter of fact, let's wrap with the bank bidding war. We'll talk about this again, and in in, in, uh, I'll be back in. A, um, I'll be back today at three. Um, 
What you're going to see is I'm doing these live shows at 12 and 3 roundabout. When you see me live, we're still now really laying the foundation for these live shows. And then we're going to rebroadcast the episode because what we found is people, even when they're watching the episodes, they're like, man, these are the same questions that I would have had if I was on the live. So even though I'm not on the live show, I'm still benefiting because those are the same questions I was going to ask. But um, we're going to let's get let's let's wrap with this bank bidding war. Y'all, the bank bidding war is when you actually make banks and credit unions bid for your loan. You don't want to actually have a dealership only get you your loan. You also don't want to have your bank only or your credit union only getting you your loan. There's something, and, and you can Google this. You can literally type this into Google and you will see that Experian has an article that shows you how to rate, that 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 um, gives you permission to rate shop. Rate shopping done correctly, you have a window. Oh, in that window, Experian says it's 45 days. In that window, you can let 10, 20, 30 banks and credit unions access your credit with a hard pull. And at the end, when that window closes, it will only show, it will only weigh on your score as one hard inquiry. So if one hard inquiry would have dropped your score nine points, 30 banks bidding on your business will drop your score nine points. And the reason why you need to shop like this is because these banks make money on your loans. These banks are not our friends. They're service providers. We don't want to have friends in business when we're getting bids. Because when you're getting bids, a person that wins the bid today or this year, they might not like you when they lose the bid on your next car. So if it's a relationship thing, they're going to say, oh, come on now. You know, I've been selling you car for years. Come on. I don't, you know, I shouldn't have to bid. That's their logic. We know we're not allowing that. Everyone's bidding. So even your bank that you've been doing business with for 10 years or five years or 20 years, they still need to compete against other people who want to give you a loan. Because if you can save one point on your interest rate, depending on how much you're borrowing, that's $1,000. And some of you who are, I mean, you, you, you're going to see using a strategy, you'll save two and three points on your interest rate. And you're talking about two and three and $4,000. So the same way we are taking getting bids for the car we're buying, getting bids for the car we're selling, the lease we're selling, the, the bank is a part of that. So once you go get, and we don't let anybody, remember this, we don't, well, we'll talk about this more at three. I'll be back at three. When you let these banks, you don't let anybody touch your credit until you have found a car. Because you don't want to open up that, you don't want to start that rate window, that 45 day period. You don't want to start that. And then now the clock is ticking on you because now you're in a hurry to find a car before the window closes. Mm -mm. You want to actually start the bank bidding war after you found your car. So you find your car, you lock up the deal, you come home with that buyer's order, and now you go online, you call your bank. Um, and you see all the online lenders. I have some listed in the book. You call your credit union, your bank. Hey, I'm getting a car. Want to see what you could offer me. No problem. Yep. Here's my credit. Boom. Okay. We'll give you 6.9%. Perfect. All right. Call the credit union. Hey, we'll give you 6.2%. Great. All right. You go online to a couple of the online resources. Okay. You get this. Now, this is very important. Once you have that best offer, now you're calling the dealership you got the car from that you have it on hold with. And you're saying, hey, I have this from my credit union. I got 6.29. If any of your banks can beat it, I'll do the deal with you. And now you let that finance manager. See, it's different when the finance manager is trying to beat an offer you have. See, what you're used to is no offer. And the finance manager, here's the conversation that they're having. What's the highest rate you think we can get them to pay? That's the That's the conversation. What is the highest rate you think they'll pay? And we still have a deal. You don't want that conversation. That's a conversation with no bids. But when you come in and you say, hey, when you call them and say, hey, listen, I got 6.29 for my credit union. If any of your banks can beat it, I'll do the deal with you. 
Now he's saying, well, thanks for the opportunity. Now he's calling his banks that he gives millions of dollars of loans to, um, or she's she gives millions of dollars in loans to every month. And she's like, hey, listen, I need you. Can you can you come with 599? I'm trying to, I'm trying to beat this bank. Now, you, now they call you and say, hey, good news. I beat that by half a point. I beat that by a point. Now you just save more money. But if you don't let all these people bid, you're giving the bank the extra money. That's the bank bidding war. But you got to do it right. You can't be going from dealer to dealer. Many people doing the bank bidding war wrong, going letting all these dealers run their credit, or they're letting the bank get get a hard hard uh, inquiry before they even go and find their car. Mm -mm. Got to do this right. No dealership doesn't run your credit first unless you let them, Tommy. Unless you let them, and we don't let them. There's no reason at all. Listen, you use the book. We'll do more Q&A. But there's no reason that a dealer should have your credit before you have purchased the car. You don't need to let your deal, the dealer run your credit to get an offer, a lease offer. You don't need to let the dealer run your credit to get a fine. Uh, really, we don't use dealers for finance offers. There's no reason. So if you have let them run your credit, it's because you were, for some reason, made to think that you needed to let them run your credit. No. We don't. We don't. So, all right. Listen, I'm going to jump off. I got some things to do before the next show, but I appreciate everybody who got the book. If you just jumped on, my new book is officially out, and uh, we'll be doing this show to really make sure that everyone can, can, can get the answers they need. But if you want everything I teach, my new book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. Everything I teach is from those seven steps. Starting with the most important question, which I asked y'all earlier, how many years are you keeping the next car? And then step seven is delivery. So that book is not a book you read. It's a book you use. You're not going through the book and saying, OK, I read the whole book. Now let me go get my car. No. By the time you get to step six, which is paperwork and protection, you should be have your car locked up and you should be talking about paperwork, protection and getting ready to go pick up your car. Step seven is delivery. So you shouldn't be reading delivery if you haven't gotten to the step where by the time you get there, you should be like, OK, I'm at the end. I shouldn't be congratulating you at step seven. You're in the book and you're, I'm like, congratulations, you're, you're at the finish line and you ain't. It, no, it's not that type of book. It's literally an action step. And by the time you get to step seven, your car is outside or you're going to pick up your car. So that's what it's about. And it's a digital book because I want to be able to update it on the fly. If any websites change, you have my scripts in there, you have my templates, anything that we use in my, and I have a video um, library too. So I work with people, hundreds of people all around the country in my video library, Cars From Home University and coaching. So I'm able to keep my pulse on everything that's happening in the market, literally day by day, all the offers. Like, so anything that changes that I need to update, I can do it quickly with a digital book so that you know, you don't have to buy a print book from me. And then in a daggone year, the thing is not not relevant anymore because things have changed. So you can get your copy in my TikTok bio, click the link, or you could get it in my Instagram bio. There's a website link there. And then you'll see a button that says 75 percent off for our launch. So as long as you as long as that timer hasn't hit zero, you won't pay the normal ninety seven dollar price. But at $97, it's incredible value. I, we've had tons of people that got it for $97. That's how we're able to have, um, uh, uh, we got a 4.9 uh, rating on Goodreads. So, but for our, for our launch, we're doing something special. So I appreciate everybody. We'll be back for the next session. And uh, everybody that got the book, use it. Please send me your success stories. Please continue to review it if the book helped you. Well, when it helps you. Please go to Goodreads because the more reviews we get, the more people can find that book and uh, the more lives we get to change. So I appreciate it. Shout out to the sharers. Make sure the two people that get the free book, make sure y'all DM me and we'll get you your free books. And uh, God bless y'all. I'll see y'all soon. Um, so come on in and let's. Get busy. Ask your questions. Who's shopping for a car right now? Come on in.
ask your questions. If you're shopping for a car right now, I want to just go through questions, 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 questions today. That's the mission. Questions, okay? I don't care if you have a question about new cars, used cars, um, leases, whatever it is you don't understand about car shopping, come on in, ask the question. Thanks, Joe. I see you sharing. Um, thank you for sharing this broadcast, y'all. It means a lot. We are uh, reaching more and more people daily, so we can't do it without you. But come on, send your questions. After you hit the share button, after you tag a friend, send the question in, and let's get busy. I just want to see how many questions we can get through today in today's show. All right. Let me look all around. We got to give people a chance on TikTok and, uh, I mean, on uh, on YouTube and uh, Facebook. It takes time for the live to show up there. Um, should you lease, should you, should lease your car, should lease your first car? Um, if you're not keeping your car eight years, you should lease because give you an example. Let's say you want, you could afford $400 a month, right? You could afford $400 a month. That only gets you about 20 grand on your first car. That's about a $20,000 loan. Now that's a, that, now what could you get for 20 grand? Not many used cars. You get a used car for 20 grand. I mean, you can't get a new car for 20 grand, but you get a couple used cars for 20 grand. So do you want to drive a used car for 20 grand or do you want to lease a brand new car for, for 400 a month? You could lease a with a great deal. You could lease about a thirty five thousand dollar car with four for 400 a month. So that's the choice you make. OK, unless you're going to keep your car long term. If you if I would absolutely lease my first car, if you don't want to have any problems with maintenance, you want to get the most car for your money. But if you're going to keep a car long term, which you probably won't because it's your first car. But if you're going to keep it long term, then buy it. Very, very simple. Leasing short term versus long term. Many people should be buying or should be leasing their children their first car, not purchasing. Uh, hold on. Let me get my banner up. Let's get the questions in. All right, let's go. Come on, y'all. We got to type fast today. Send these questions. Need to buy my daughter a car before she goes to college. Budget 20 grand. What kind? Listen, that's what we were just talking about. There's a lot of, all right, so if I had 20, why did you pick the number 20,000? You paying cash? If you're paying cash, now you decide what car does she need? What's the needs? If you say, all right, she only needs a small car, then look at the small cars and make your choice. Do you want new or do you want pre-owned? But you, if it's twenty grand, you're probably not going to get new. So you, you you're looking at you're looking at a pre-owned car. There's lots of pre-owned cars out there, but you you are. Is this something that you think she's going to keep? Is this something you think she's going to keep? You got to be honest. If she's not going to keep that car, why take why take twenty grand out your family's bank account and put her in a car a used seat? And who who's seen first time? <laughs> look. If you have seen, or if maybe it happened to you, your first car had a bunch of problems when you were a child. Uh, maybe it was broke because it's a used car. It could be, hey, I'm out, I'm out at college, and my car is six, seven years old. The car just, you know, stopped on me. Whatever. That's what comes with it sometimes. Now you're weighing that against should I lease her something? Because if I lease her something, I could put her in a brand new thirty-five thousand or thirty thousand dollar car. The same car that would have you, you get, I could put her in that car and I could pay three fifty a month. So I could take twenty grand out my bank account, put it in the car, or I could pay three fifty a month, put her in a brand new car. But if you're gonna do a twenty thousand dollar budget and you're adamant on buying, then I would just be looking at the best car I could get for twenty grand. But you gotta look at what class she needs. Does she need a sedan, four door? Does she need an SUV? Does she need a? You know what I'm saying? So you gotta narrow it down to the needs first. But if you really want to save money, you think about you think about leasing versus purchasing her first car. Should I buy my lease because cars are very expensive? Jonas, if you shop around, they're not. If you shop around, I look, y'all, I know a lot of people are discouraged saying, man, should I buy my lease? Because, you know, car, cars are not expensive when you shop around. Don't go. If you go into one dealer, they might tell you anything. That you, They might tell you these cars are 600 a month. Meanwhile, the dealer on the other side of town doing those same cars for 450 so before you say a car is expensive, do me one favor, get four offers. Whatever car that you shopped and you said, this seems expensive, take that car. I want you to go on Google, whatever brand it is, if it's Nissan, type in Nissan dealers near me. I want you to call each one and ask for the sales manager. And I want you to say, hey, this is what I'm looking at. I went to Nissan of such and such. 
This is what they quoted me. I'm going to give you an opportunity as well. Can you get me a price of what you could do? If you do that with a sales manager five times, you're going to see how different the prices are. And now if all five of them seem expensive, now that car could have a bad deal. That car might be a bad deal. Doesn't mean all cars are a bad deal, but before you before you rule a car as expensive, you must get five offers because the dealer you went to might be expensive. Not the car, the dealer. Some dealers, I usually call about 70, 80% are overpriced. That means someone else would blow their price away. You got to get to them. All right, let's go. Come on. I want to get through as many questions as possible. Type your questions. Let's keep it rolling. If y'all don't know, my book is out. It's called Car Shopping for People that Hate Car Shopping. It's a digital book, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. You could get it in my TikTok bio. You're not going to leave the broadcast. You could get it in my Instagram bio. You're not going to leave the broadcast. Or you could scan the QR code or go to Deshaun'sBook.com. It's 75% off for the next 30 minutes while you're on the broadcast. All right. Um, waiting for Toyota Strout pick, Stout pickup to be released, I'm guessing. Looking for a midsize pickup in the $25,000 range. Um, I'm guessing that when you guys pull these numbers out for your budget, it's something that you're paying cash for. So if it's something you're paying cash for, because other than that, these numbers don't really matter. If you're getting a loan, these numbers don't matter as much because, you know, $25,000 tax monthly. So if you're paying cash, I'm going to assume you're paying cash. Then what you're going to do is you're going to open up all the marketplaces. I assume you're going to go used. If you go used, you're going to open up all the marketplaces. All the, and I'm going to list them for y'all. The reason why it's important that you don't get committed to one marketplace is because they all have different inventory. So I want you to picture from now on when you're shopping for a used car, Think about it like this. Car gurus, that's walmart.com. Auto trader, that's amazon.com. Um, cars.com, that's, you know, Alibaba. Or something. Every marketplace may have similar inventory. They may have some overlap, but they definitely have their own independent inventory, which is why when we shop, when, when we shop for a used car, you want to have all the marketplaces open and then you want to put in your request, pick up trucks, and then you want to sort your price by lowest to highest, lowest to highest, open up all the marketplaces, create an account, create an account, put your email in, create an account, because what happens when you create an account? Who knows what happens when you, who knows what you can do on a used car marketplace when you create an account? You can get automatic notifications of new inventory the second it hits the marketplace. That's what you want. So you're going to open the marketplaces, create accounts, put in your list of what you're looking for, and you're going to now, so I would go 100 miles out. I'd go 100 miles out to start, and then I look at them, and I want to see that list. And I want, here's the first thing you want to do. The name of this segment is called Buying Car, How to Get Below market car prices, below market. You didn't get a deal if you pay fair market value. That's just not a deal in my opinion. That's average. Fair market means average price. Over, over, you know, above market value means you overpaid. As long as we talk and as long as I'm the one that you want to learn from, you want Deshaun to teach you how to get cars, below market is the only thing we care about, below market. So in order for us to get below market, we got to know what the market is. So I want you to sort on all those marketplaces from low to high and then look at the low side of the market. Now you're going to ask yourself, can I find a car? Hey, Lisa, good to see you. Now, when you look for when you look at the low side of the market, most of those cars are going to be trash. That's OK. What do I mean by trash? Bad car faxes, salvage titles, um, frame damage total lost vehicles, multiple accidents, that's okay. I'm playing in that side of the market because I know the closer I get to that price, that's where my deal is. That's where my deal is. I'm not interested in what's going on up here. So when you have the alerts on and you know what the low side of the market is, the minute a car hits, we can actually hop on it. Um, there is a step after that. 
We got to check Carfax. We got to check Carfax and go down. There's a process. Once we do that, we move to looking at the Carfax reports, making sure that uh, making sure the history is great. And I mean history, the type of title. We don't want salvage. We don't want rentals. Not as our first choice. Rentals, not our first choice. I know some of you may be wondering, Deshaun, should I buy a rental? Not your first choice. <laughs> not your first choice. You want that to be, okay, I looked at everything and the rental ended up being the best value. So I got it. And it had a great history and all of that. Type of title. Then we move to service records. Then we move to accident records. Then we have to verify there's no bogus fees. Because some of y'all, you've seen, they'll put a nice price up there to try to grab our attention, but they're going to slap three or 4,000 of bogus fees. And they want you to just come to the dealership. They want you to just say, hey, look at this car. It's a good price. Let me get in my car, drive there. Don't do that. Look at that price. When you're narrowing it down, we always call. We verify fees. There's no bogus fees. Now we're on our way. But if I'm scouting a pickup truck like you just, the question you just asked, any used car, I'm watching that market. I know what the low side of the prices are, and I'm waiting for the right opportunity. It might be there the minute I pop up on the marketplace, or it might come as an alert. Here's the beautiful thing about alerts. And then keep typing in questions because I told you I want to try to get to as many questions in this segment as I can. Shout out to everybody who shared. I appreciate y'all helping me spread this message. So when you get when, when, when I'm looking at that, if I know the low side of the market, when most other people don't, the minute I get an email, this new pickup truck just hit them, just hit a marketplace. I look at it. I look at the service records. I look at the accident history. I verify what the price was and it was new. Boom, no bogus. I'm on my way. Because everyone else is going to hesitate because they don't know the market. When you know the market on a used car because you've been watching it, you hop in, you grab it. You're, you've got that car locked up before anybody really even knew it hit the market. That's what you want. That's what you want. I, I go into that in detail. I try to really give you a detailed overview just now. That's all in my book. That's called my multiple marketplace strategy. It's in step five of our, you know, of my book, um, car shopping for people that hate car shopping, seven steps, saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships. Get your copy. If you want the detailed strategy, go to my TikTok bio, grab your copy, 75% off for the next 30 minutes, or go to my Instagram bio. All right, let's keep the question, let's keep the questions going. Uh, good morning. Scenario. $15,000 vehicle. How much down payment with credit under 600? So it sounds like are you if, if, if credit's under 600, you're not controlling your own financing, which is which is which is sometimes tough. It's, it is tough because you, you know, you got to make sure that they don't manipulate the financing. Anybody on here who doesn't have anybody on here who has a credit score in that low 600 and under range, um, you know, this is what you got to be aware of. OK. What you're trying to do is you're, if you're trying to just be penalized with interest. Let me go more into detail. When you, when you don't have good credit, you should be comfortable saying, I'm going to pay more interest. But what the industry does is they want to make you not just pay more interest, you're going to pay more for the car. You're going to pay more for the car. You're going to pay bank fees. Now, not only are you buried from the interest, but the same car that somebody with good credit could have came in and got for 18, you ain't getting for 18. You're going to pay 21 for it. So this is how they dig you into a deeper hole. And if you allow it, you're digging yourself into a deeper hole. So you're, you, you have to separate your car purchase from your, from your loan. This is what I, this is what everyone does. This is what everyone who's learning from me and everyone who's into financial literacy is going to do. But when you have bad credit, it's harder to do. So you have to be more diligent to not mix up the price of the car with your loan. So what you need to establish is what am I paying for the car? And you need to verify beyond anything that that's a good price. How do you do that? The same way I just laid it out for you and, you know, using my multiple marketplace strategy. You rewind, watch the last three minutes, four minutes. That's how you make sure the car itself is a below market price. Now, once you have that below market price, it's six, you know, this young lady said, Miss Smith said the car is 15,000. 15,000, is that a great price for that car? Forget the loan. Let's, step two is the loan. Step one's the car price. 
So before we see, we're, con we're mixing those two. In this question, let's make sure that the car is priced the right way first, because I'm telling you what you're up against. Y'all are trying to overcharge me for the car and kill me on interest too. I'll let you get the interest because that's my fault. I, I don't have a credit. I'm supposed to pay more interest than someone with good credit. But what I'm not going to let you do is put me in a car that's 3000 over what, it, what, what I could get it for on a, from another source. So let's just assume, Ms. Smith, you've done the check. You're going to do that homework. You, 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 you check those websites. The car is a great price. Now let's talk about the loan. What are you charging me? What's my interest rate? What's my interest rate? Now, once you have the interest rate, you go to an auto loan calculator and you plug that thing in. Here's the simple um, estimate. Every $5,000 is how much per month? First person that has it, first person that says it, you got a free copy of my book. Every $5,000 on a loan is about, is about how much per month, y'all? Every $5,000, I'm looking on all the platforms. I oh, King Divine, DM me. A lot of people came in. King Divine, you got it first. DM me. I'll send you a free copy of the book. If you got the book already, I'll, I'll, I'll refund you for the book. Everyone else, you can get it at 75% off. This is the kind of stuff I do. That's why you got to be engaged through the whole broadcast. All right? So when you... When you um, are looking at the price of the car, if you know that car is 15 grand, I want you to always assume a five-year loan first. Yes, people go six years. Yes, people go seven years, which I would never recommend you ever go seven years. That's like a 40-year mortgage. But yes, they'll do it. But you want to assume five years because if you get the same payment for five years as six years, you save money. $300 a month for five years is different than $300 a month for six years. So whenever you look at a car, I want you to take that $5,000 and say, okay, if this car is $15,000, this should cost me about $300 a month. Now we have my interest that's going to be, if my interest rate is, is you know, 10 points higher than normal or uh, uh, is, is, is uh, several percentage higher, then that's going to go up. But that's something you can type into Google, auto loan calculator. Put that price of the car in, put that interest rate in. And what you're going to find most times is it's not the interest they're trying to kill you with. It's the price of the car, Miss Smith. That's the big thing. They kill people with bad credit and they overcharge you for the car itself. Somebody with good credit could come in and snatch that car for, for less. So take care of the price of the car first. The rest will usually work out and you just verify it. When you look at that daggone buyer's order, it shouldn't be a bunch of stuff on there you don't recognize. It should be the price of the car, tax, documentation fee, DMV, motor vehicles. If you see a bunch of other stuff on there, get the heck out of there. And we don't even go there before we verify fees. But being that you found the car, we'll never go to a dealership. If you listen to how I'm telling you to do it, you shouldn't be in a dealership before you verify the fees. But sometimes people some stumble onto a car lot, find a car, and they're excited about it. Then they find out, oh shoot, they got all these fees. Got to get out of there. Don't pay. Don't try to negotiate with them. Not you can't negotiate fake fees. Because even if you take off some fees, you're back at the original price. I didn't get a deal. You get what I'm saying? That's why we always verify these people with fake fees before we come out of our house. All right, dealers increase your monthly payment if you go. If you go for a shorter loan, also isn't isn't it bad to go to multiple dealers because they all run your credit? No one runs our credit. Okay, Malik. From now on, you never let someone run your credit until you're ready to purchase something. Until you've agreed to purchase something, remember that, y'all. Nobody runs your credit. Now, listen, I bought. Not only have I bought at least probably ten cars in my lifetime, I've helped. Thousands of people do this. No one runs your credit until you have agreed to buy something. What does that mean? I've seen a car. I've agreed. I know what the price is. Let's go. Next step is my credit. We don't do that to get quotes. 
We don't do that to get estimated about how much is that going to cost me? I need to run your credit. No, we don't do that. And with if you keep what I'm telling you in mind about Esther, now if you get the book, it's all in the book very detailed. If you watch the videos and you watch them enough, you'll eventually get it because it's the same thing I'm saying. I'm not going to change the principles I'm teaching you. $5,000 on a loan is this much. If you know what this card, this is different for leases. Leases, we get lease quotes. That's where you got to get multiple quotes, which doesn't require running your credit. Y'all know what I say. If anybody says we need to run your credit, you tell them, assume tier one. Assume, remember those three words, assume tier one. Tier one means good credit, not super credit, good. 680, 700, 725, like most people are going to qualify for tier one. You don't need to be an 850 score to qualify for tier one. The reason why it's important that you Bad credit, good credit, wonderful credit, always see the quote in the offers with tier one is because if you don't have good credit, when the quote adjusts for your credit, when the price changes, you need to see how much it changed. If you got a 600 score and we just told you it's going to be six, it's going to be 490 a month, tier one. Then we come back and say we ran your credit and it's you know, it's 580. It's $100 more. Okay. You can see that difference. When you don't see it with good credit and you just let them run your credit, then give you the quote, they're going to jack that joint up so high, you'll never know what it was with good credit. So you always shop. You always want to know, what would this be with good credit? What would this be tier one? Never let anybody run your credit to give you an offer because now you're hooked in. You got a hard inquiry. You're hooked in. They took away your ability to shop multiple offers because now you think in order to shop multiple offers, I got to let everybody run my credit. You can't shop the market. They've limited you. Never let anybody run your credit before you agree to purchase something. Very valuable info. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Smith. Appreciate you. Let's go. I told you I'm trying to get through as many questions this segment as possible. Let's keep sending them. I'm going to try to answer them as quick as possible. For those of you who just came in, could you please, if you share good information and you consider this to be good, can you please share this with somebody? You could either tag them. Tell everybody you know, too. Tell everybody you know. This guy, Deshaun, follow his channel. He does these live shows. He comes in. He's trying to set people free and make sure that you save all the money you can and you should be saving when you purchase or lease cars. Yep, I know what you mean, man. Malik said, wow, I thought they had to run your credit first. I understand. I understand, man. Many people have been convinced that they cannot get a quote or an offer from dealerships without having their credit run. It is not necessary. Thanks, King Divine. Appreciate you. Oh, you're going to get, I gave him a free book. He don't want a free book. Now he's going to give me some of the blessings back with all of these gifts he's sending. Appreciate you. All right, um, let's go, let's go. Come on, send them in. I had two payments left on my lease and the sales guy told me that the dealership would pay those last two payments for me if I got into a new lease with them. Can dealerships really eat those losses? Great question. Most times the answer is no. Here's what they're doing. Who's had a dealership call and say, we'll get uh, we'll get you out of your car. We'll take care of the remaining payments. Come on in. Who's had a dealership either call or send them an email saying, come on in. We'll take care of your remaining payments. Don't worry about your, you know, hey, I got three payments left. Don't worry. We could take care of that. We'll eat those payments. What they're doing, I see a lot of people who've had it. That's a very common call, very common email. What they're doing is you and, and if you see there's something called a payment waiver payment waiver i've never seen for a for a competitor brand so if you have a honda i've never seen ford say come in with your honda payments and we'll waive them i have occasionally seen a loyalty waiver where if you lease the same brand they will say we're waiving 
two or three or one, six, whatever it may be, payments. But more often than not, what's happening is, and if you want to write them back and you want to just in those phone calls and you want to rate, you want to find out stuff quick. See, I want to give you all stuff where you could get to things quick. You could get to results very fast without wasting any time. Just ask them, do you have a payment waiver? Do you have a payment waiver? Now, that's going to put them back because they're going to say, if if they if they they know what that means but those who don't have a payment waiver which means they're taking those two or three or one or five payments you have left and they're building them into your next deal which is not a good deal because if you didn't have those payments remaining you could have gotten a better overall deal but because they want you to be anxious and pay another they'll say okay well you'll pay another 30 40 bucks a month to get out early, but overall, it's still a good deal because you got a new car. But what they're doing is rolling those payments over. If they have a payment waiver, if I ever called a customer and I said, hey, Mr. Jones, I can get you out of your lease early because we just got this special program. If they said, hey, is there a payment waiver? I would say, yes, there is. Mercedes will waive three of your remaining payments if you release another Mercedes. Not with us, because here's the thing, remember this, Dealerships don't have special programs. Those programs are regional. So it's always competition. It's always I'm going to make people compete. Don't believe anything. Oh, we have a military program. No, every dealer in that region has a military program that has the same thing. That's why we can shop competitors very um, confidently because we know you all all have the same thing to work with. You all have access to similar cars, same cars, and you all have the same program. You don't have anything special that this Jeep dealer doesn't have. So I'm going to make you all compete. So if somebody has a payment waiver, that's different. That means you're not putting your remaining payments into your new car lease. Your, your, those payments are disappearing. But most times, most times, they're not. They're, way, they're putting them in your new lease, which means it's better off for you waiting until you have one payment left to start shopping and here's what you do, y'all. You wait till you got one payment left, start shopping the market because you could extend your lease for free. You pay tax on the additional payment, but you could extend your lease to buy another month or two if you want. You call, tell your leasing company you haven't found a car yet. You like to extend the lease and they'll extend you for a month. Some will extend you for three. Some will extend you for up to six. So if you got a really great payment, and you're like, man, I know there's no chance that I, I like I got a, a 1% lease or less. And, and some of you have been following me, you know what a 1% lease is. Payment is under 1% of the MSRP, no money down. Then you don't want to get out of that early. You might want to extend that for three more months or six more months while you shop the market. But that's that's what you got to be aware of when these people are calling you, Sonia, and telling you, come get out of your lease early. They want to roll those payments over and put you in a new deal. All right. Why can't dealers get you the best deal for your situation? That's not their job, Skinner. Their job is to make the most money possible and make you happy in the process. That's a conflict of interest. It's not to save you the most money and make you happy. You, you, you. So what you're doing is if you treat, I talked about this in one of our last broadcasts. I said, we got to move from, we don't need, we don't want our, our car dealership, our car dealer to be our friend. And that doesn't mean we we that doesn't mean we are not friendly, but we're going to make you compete for our business. If you're some of you have been dealing with brokers, I used to be a broker for four years. You're going to find out. Uh, I've told you, brokers' money comes out of your deal. So whatever deal you the broker got you, they don't work for free. So either they got money from you and pay, and, and, and this is this is when you, you really don't know because you, you're giving control of your transaction to someone else. Sometimes people say, well, I didn't pay the broker anything. No problem. Whatever they made came out of your deal. So people don't work for free. Brokers get paid like dealers. So they might say, okay, we're making $3,000 on this deal. Give me 15, you keep 15. So that's $1,500 or $3,000 that maybe they didn't pass on to you. 
So you 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 can't you can't depend on someone who has total control of your transaction to be totally transparent with you. And sometimes some people might say, well, I paid the broker up front five hundred dollars or seven hundred dollars. They still have control, which means they might double dip and still take five hundred or a thousand. Or, or because what a broker's trying to do, here's when you know you're dealing with a bad broker. Here's when you know you're dealing with a greedy broker. Because some of you trust brokers way too much and you don't realize what you're giving away. When you're dealing with a greedy broker, a greedy broker says, What what can you pay? Just like a just like a greedy car seller. What can you pay? What's the most you can pay? Because what they're trying to do now is say, All right, if I can get you that deal. A, de a dealership might say, all right, I got that customer you bringing me to $480 a month. But you, because you trusted the broker, you told them the most I could pay is $550. Now they say between $480 and $550, that's my profit. That $3,000 right there, because why would I come volunteer to you $480 when you told me you're okay with $550? But what a broker should do, if it's a legitimate broker, and he's shopping offers for you the way I'm teaching you, you can start your own brokerage because I teach you how to shop multiple offers, get multiple offers, and then present the best ones to yourself or to whoever you're representing. So when I was brokering, I'm shopping multiple offers. I'm talking to multiple dealers and I'm saying, this deal is at this price, this deal is at this price. Here's the one that won. Now you pick the one that won and there's no markup there. It's just, I'm just connecting you to the one. You paid me when I was consulting, that's how I ran it. And I gave the customer a list of all the dealerships and all their offers. So there's no markup in there built in for me. There's no extra money built in for me. So the people who you're hiring to get you your best deal, they have a vested interest to make the most money they can. That's why I want you to trash that model, learn to shop the way I'm telling you to shop online, and you'll see I don't need those guys. I could get my best deal in 45 minutes sitting right in my living room. Does that make sense? All of this is what we talk about. This is all what I teach in my videos. This is what's in my book. If you guys don't know and you just jumped on, I have my book out. It's available. It's called Car Shopping. For people that hate car shopping. It's a digital book. Go get your copy now. It's 75% off for the next 30 minutes in my TikTok bio, in my Instagram bio, or you could go to Deshaun'sBook.com or scan the QR code on Facebook or Instagram. All right, let's keep it going. I told y'all I want to get through as many questions as possible today. Thank you to everybody that's sharing. I see we got about, we got about 400 people on here across all the platforms. Absolutely appreciate everybody being here and tell all your friends about this channel. Tell no matter where you're at, tell them Google Deshaun the Auto Advisor, follow him, whatever platform they're on. I try to be everywhere the people are. Hey, I'm stuck in a finance with a with one year left, but I want to get a new car. Should I lease or finance? Good question. Here's a simple question to ask yourself. I call this the most important question. This is the first step. How many years are you keeping your next car? Everybody answer that question for me who's car shopping now or in the next 12 months. How many years are you keeping your next car? Type it into the comments. Not, not how long, how many years is your goal to keep your next car? And then I'm going to tell you all how we use this question to answer the leasing versus buying question. Because some of you are really wondering could I get a better deal leasing or should I buy? Just like this gentleman uh, just asked. I believe that was a guy. Okay. So I see a lot of, I see three years, 10 years, 10 years ish, 10 years, uh, three years, uh, three, 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 five. Look at this. So I'm going to give y'all, uh, I'm going to give y'all what you need to do. As you come in, the question is, how many years are you keeping the next car you're shopping for? Every single car, hold on, every single car that you're shopping for, I want you guys to ask yourself this question. Now, here's what you do. I want you to look at your answer. If the answer is eight or more, your best deal is going to be shopping for a purchase. Shopping for your best deal on a purchase. You don't have to wonder, could I have saved money leasing 
if it's eight, nine, ten, or you don't have to worry about leasing. Now, I want you to ask your children that same question and your spouse. Hey, let me ask you a question. How, how many years do you think you're going to keep this car? College student, doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I think I'll probably keep it for like maybe four or five years, at least through college. It's very important. I call this in my book, the most important question. If it's under eight, you lease. You should be shopping for an aggressive lease deal because you are going to pay so much less money and you're going to drive so much better. You're going to have so much better car. Like the cars, the quality of what you drive is going to be so much better if you are a short-term person. Now, you might not consider seven years to be short term, but when you're purchasing a depreciating asset, that depreciating asset loses value for years, years, years. It keeps going down and then it levels out where it's not losing that much value. Anytime you're replacing the car while it's dropping like this, that's the short term period. Your goal is to get to the long term period where the car is not losing much value anymore. Some of you who've had cars outside, look, answer this. If you've had a car in your driveway outside for the eight years, isn't it worth about the same about the same value it was six months ago? A year down the road, isn't it going to be worth about the same price? It's worth now. If you've had it outside for eight years, I'm, I'm not ta I'm talking to long term vehicle purchasers. This five years. Nope. Five years. It's going to be it's going to be pretty different. Value is going to. But eight, nine, ten year people, you notice the car outside is worth about the same price. That's when you've won purchasing. So if that's not your goal to get to that, you should not be purchasing. You should be shopping your most aggressive lease offers to find a deal that's going to land you under 1.5%. Some of you know I talk about the 1% rule, the 1.5% rule to know when you're overpaying for a lease, and that's going to save you the most money, hands down, hands down. All right, uh, would keep them longer, but in the Northeast, salt kills cars. That's a fact. You got to take that into consideration. You got to take in your area and, and you know, it's, it's something you need to consider. Um, always great advice. Thank you. Appreciate you. You know, that's what we're here for. That's the mission. I appreciate it. All right, come on. Keep sending in the questions until I can't drive it anymore. There you go. That's the name of the game. But don't let that be six, seven years. And look, when you are long term, when you're buying a car, every one of you who said eight years, nine years, 10 years, you need to make sure. Aside from getting the best offer and make sure you get the best price on the car, you do that through competitive bids, multiple options, multiple offers. If you're using what I teach, seeing the whole market for the used car market, seeing, the, you know, getting at least five offers on a, on a new car. Once you do this, you need to make sure the car is going to last that long. Because sometimes we skip the quality choice. Uh, we skip the what the due diligence we need to do. And, and I'm going to teach you all real quick how you do this in five minutes. You need to make sure the car is going to last because some people will say, Deshaun, you know what, man? I wanted to keep the car 10 years, but the car started acting up. Transmission went out. But if you Google that year of car, you would see that the reports on Google, the independent sources, these websites, vehiclemotor.com, uh, all of these different independent sources told you that about 80,000 miles, the transmission starts slipping. They told you that around this time, the vehicle has electrical problems. They told you, they're telling the public. So what we do is we Google, this is, this is in step four in my process, I call shopping, not buying. Shopping is I'm deciding what I want. Part of deciding what I want is ruling out any cars that have problems. I could love a Maserati all day and I want to buy that. And I Google that year Maserati and I see this particular car here is going to be in the shop three times a year. Mm -mm. Next. Many people are going to drive that car off the lot happy, but they're going to they're in for hell. 
So that little five minute step of quality control, checking the, the reliability, checking the longevity, you should be Googling the year of the car you want to buy, the name of the car, longevity. You put those three words in Google, look at what that first page says. That'll tell you if this car can confidently go 200 to 300,000 miles. That's what you need. All right. Let's go. For everybody that just jumped on, welcome. I do this car. This is called Inside of Secrets to Below Market Car Deals because that's all we care about. We're not paying market value. We certainly ain't talking about over market value. All we care about is below market car deals. So welcome. Um, if you want to get everything that I teach in one place, I just released my book. It's a digital book. It's called Car Shopping for People that Hate Car Shopping. You can get your copy at 75% off in the book. Uh, it's normally $97. It's a digital book with a lot of value. So I didn't want to price it at a normal book price. It's just worth a lot more than that. But you can get it for 75% uh, 75 off. Go to uh, my TikTok bio. You won't pay the $97. Go to my Instagram bio. Get your copy for the next 30 minutes. Or go to Deshaun'sBook.com. Scan the QR code. Thank you. Tova said, I just bought the book. Enjoy it. Thank you. Use it. Please DM me or email me when you get your first deal and let me know. I want to see deals in my inbox, y'all. Um, I don't want people. I don't want any of you guys. He DMing me saying, hey, I just got this car. Check it out. What do you think? No, I want you DMing me saying, look, I just got this car. I use your stuff. I got multiple offers. Look how much I saved. That's when I want. That's how I want to congratulate you. All right. Um, design. What if you put 60K miles a year on a car? Good question. So I assume you're doing this for business. Any super high mileage drivers on here? You're doing 40,000 miles a year and up. Let's say over 30. Let's say over 30. I would call that super high mileage. Anybody doing that kind of mileage? I'm not talking about 25, 20. That's a different strategy. That's in my book and you're not. And, and, and that I consider that a high mileage driver. I'm talking to you guys who are, you basically are, this is Toro. This is rental car businesses. This is Uber. I'm living on the road and I'm making money on the car. If that's you. I don't want you to concern yourself with leasing because your lifestyle and your mileage is too unpredictable per year. You might do 40,000 one year, 60,000 the next year, 33,000 the third year. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to ask yourself the minute you get your car, if y'all don't realize what I'm good at, what I think I'm good at is looking down the road and making sure that the plan that we're going to roll out not just works for us today but we look down the road and say man that plan that i that car i got three years ago i structured that thing right because cars we know who knows cars will come back to bite you not when you buy them later i go to trade them in wow i got ten thousand dollars of negative equity it was all good just when i bought the car but now it's not so i want you to ask yourself when am i going to replace the car that's what you have to ask yourself. You super high mileage drivers, you have to ask yourself, when am I going to replace the car? Now, that might be three years. That might be four years. And whatever you determine that to be, that's the length. That is the maximum length of your loan. You do not take a loan longer than that, because at the point of replacement, your car is almost worthless because you're going to burn the heck out of it. It's going to have 250, 300,000 miles on it. It's going to be almost worthless. Not worthless, almost. So here's what you can't have a year or two years left on your loan. This is what most high mileage drivers, super high mileage drivers deal with. They come in, they're ready to replace their car, still got a year or two left on the loan. They still owe 10 grand on the loan. Car's worth $3,000. They still got two years left on the loan. They owe 15 grand. Cars worth three thousand dollars. If you if you've experienced this, be honest and type type in and, and, and hit the like button. And I know because I've seen this so many times. So if you just if you just take a shorter loan, one year shorter, two years shorter. Yes, you're going to pay one hundred fifty dollars more per month. But what you're doing is you're, you're it's a business move. 
you're saying I'm going to take a little less monthly profit, but then at the end, I'm not going to have $10,000 or $12,000 or $15,000 of negative equity. That's your losses right there. You know what your losses are as a high mileage driver. It's in that negative equity because you have made this money for two, three years. It was all good. Oh, we out here making money. Now, when you go to get that next car, you're realizing your losses. All right, what you mean? Yeah, you're upside down, 15 grand. So take the shorter loan. Ask yourself, when am I going to replace this car? When you say I'm going to replace it in four years, that's my maximum loan, four. I cannot do it longer. So when I come to replace, my car is paid off. And here, now you have an asset. Now you have something that's worth $3,000 for your down payment. Or now you have something that's worth $3,000 that you can put in the bank and you get the next deal. If you do that, your high mileage, your super high mileage driving experience is going to be so, so good. And what I'm just talking, what I just talk, talk to you about is a business conversation. That's business. That's good business. What you're doing when you push those losses to the back, bad business. All right, let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling, especially for Uber Lyft drivers. There you go. That's who I was just talking to. So take that advice, Uber Lyft drivers, anybody who got cars on the road and you got loans on them, that's how you do it. All right. Yep. It's about time to replace it. My bad. Uh, wait, hold on. Let's go. Come on. We keep the questions going fast. I told you I wanted to get through as many as possible today. Um, a very high mileage driver to work and back. There you go. That's fine. Now, if you have predictable mileage, very high mileage, don't very high mileage is not is not 18, 20, you know, 25,000. I'll, I'll tell y'all, like, if you I'm not I'm, I'm talking about people who can't predict their mileage. If you know I drive an hour to work and back, I drive 25,000 miles a year. I'll tell you the story about this gentleman I met when I was a manager at Hyundai for a couple months. Um, I was a man. No, six weeks. That's all it took. And I said, no, that's not for me. Guy ended up going to jail, the owner of the dealership. And I said, no, thanks. Super highway dealership. But I had a chance to experience something that somebody like this, he was in sales and he was returning his lease on his Hyundai. Thank you. Shout out to everybody sending gifts. Shout out to everybody who got a book. I appreciate y'all supporting this broadcast and shout out to the sheriffs, people who tag somebody who hit that share button. I appreciate it here. We can't do this mission without you guys. So this guy comes in. He's got seven. He's got almost seventy five thousand miles on his Hyundai. And I'm like, this is crazy. I said, you lease this? And he was like, yeah, I always lease. I never buy a car anymore. I was spending so much money buying these cars. And uh, and I said, wow, like. How does what he said? Yeah, I got a twenty five thousand mile a year lease. I saw what he was paying. It was like. $150, $200 more than a normal payment. I said, this is great. I said, this is incredible because I saw, I just told you all about the losses of people who buy their cars with negative, uh, with high mileage. He came in and said, all I do, I pay about, I pay that extra money for the additional mileage. I come, I bring that car back. Every three years, I get a brand new one. And he can see part of being wise financially is being able to count your costs. You high mileage drivers, you lose so much money in these big losses, which are about you can't count your costs, which is why you very rarely know how much you're actually losing on these cars. He knows I pay five hundred ninety dollars a month for my Hyundai, twenty five thousand miles a year. I come in every I know what my car costs me. There's no surprises at the end. There's no baggage at the end. I get a high mileage lease. And some of you be honest, if you didn't know high mileage leases existed. Type of question mark. <laughs> Type of question mark if you didn't know. So, some of you may have been taught leases only come with 10,000 miles per year. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, that's it. Look, a lot of people. So when, and look, I didn't know. I told you I was surprised. I was surprised because I had never built out a high mileage lease up until that point. From then on, I started talking to my customers about it. But up to that point, up till I witnessed it, I never saw that before, and I was in the business. That's why I don't fault car salespeople when they come on here and they don't know what they're talking about, because I know they didn't train us. Everything I learned, I had to get with very intelligent people, or I had to learn it myself. They don't teach car salespeople. So I want y'all trained. I want y'all to know how to move. That's why I put this book out, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. 
get it for 75% off. Go to my TikTok bio, go to my Instagram bio, click, click, scan the QR code and get your book. It's everything I teach in one place. Some of you are like, Deshaun, I like the live, but look, can I get all everything in one spot, like step by step? Because I got, y'all know how many videos I got on my pages, hundreds. So yes, every video, I don't waste it, but you got to siphon through those and see, oh, this is for high mileage drivers. This is for cash buyers. This is for people who want to lease. This is for people with bad credit. And you're trying to cycle through all of that. I'm sure some of you are going to get a little confused. That's what I want to avoid. All right. Can you please do a fast rundown of leasing or financing? Ali, it's a very simple thing. I asked people on here about 10 minutes ago, how long you're keeping your next car? If the answer is we had everybody answer, if the answer is eight years or more, you should be shopping for your best purchase deal. New car, used car. You're going to win with long term ownership because you're going to lit. You're going to outlive the depreciation of the car. If it's under eight years, if it's three to seven and we're going to talk about people who say two, you're losing tons of money. You got it. You shouldn't be one or two. Something's wrong there. And, you know, we'll talk about that maybe later. But most people said three, five, six. If it's under seven, you should be shopping for your most aggressive lease. And you can't break the 1.5% rule. You can't go above 1.5% of the MSRP, no money down on your lease offers because you're overpaying for your lease. So you could you could you could have the right foundation, which means Deshaun, all right, I know I'm a short-term person. I'm not keeping my car more than eight years. I'm gonna lease but you could overpay for your lease too. So that's why you want to make sure you know the 1.5% rule, shop multiple offers, never one dealer. I like to get at least five offers. In my book, I teach something called the 25 to five strategy. I teach you how to connect with 25 dealers to get five quotes. We do this in about 20 minutes. The connecting with the dealers, 20 minutes, and we do it all by email. Now you could do it by phone if you want, but you must get five offers because that's the only way you're going to see for yourself how different the dealer's prices are. You have to make sure your lease is never above 1.5% and you won't get your best lease deal until you get five offers from five independent dealerships. Okay, you can do it by phone. You can talk to a sales manager or you can do it my way online. Just do it. All right. Uh, is it best to listen and you could fill it in. Somebody's asking, is it best to, to, uh, is it best to lease new electric or used leases are 99% used, uh, new cars. Very rarely. Sometimes you see when I, uh, sometimes Lexus try to do a used car lease, BMW try to do a used car lease. The reason why I don't like it is because one, it's hard to shop those because every deal it had to, it has to be the right car. That's what I don't like about shopping these uh these used car leases it's very one off thing we'd have a car and we'd be like hey this one qualifies for a lease program but you can't shop the offer to even know is it a good deal or not 99.9% of leases brand new cars brand new cars you, you or a demo which means somebody used it in a dealership drove it a couple thousand miles but it can still be leased all right uh do the steps in the book still apply if you have to lease a vehicle out of state most of I can't, I, I'm not going to say most because we're connecting with 25 dealers, uh, kicks. We're usually getting deals out of state. I mean, we're certainly talking to dealers out of state and getting offers from them because, and sometimes it's going to surprise you. Sometimes your closest dealer is the most expensive or is in that list of being the most expensive or they want to make it hard. Sometimes a deal at 45 minutes away will be the one to blow everybody's deal away that's close to you. So certainly, certainly. High mileage commuters, lease or buy? Oh, we, we we already had that conversation. Let, let me actually make it, let me actually make a, uh, a, add something to that. I have three strategies that I teach on high mileage driving. One is for the, sh- for the long-term person, two for the short term. Now, you know, from being on here the last couple minutes and some of you, you know, you've been, you've been, you've been, uh, You've been learning from me long enough to know short term is under seven years. Under under eight, really. If you're short term and a high mileage driver, there's two strategies for you. If you're long term, just get a good car that's going to last. Get your best deal. Keep the car. Eight, nine, ten years. You'll outlive the depreciation and then you'll be fine. There's nothing wrong with 
you just not gonna you're gonna be the person who drives the same car it's like that guy who uh if I bought if I bought a car and I put thirty thousand miles on it every year, but I kept it ten years, that's three hundred thousand miles. Sure, I might put a new transmission in there. I might put a rebuilt a used engine in there. But overall, oh man, I'm I, the money I'm paying for this car is great. I kept this. I bought it ten years ago. I didn't put a ton of miles on it. I got my money out of it. No, it's not it's not worth anything to anybody else. Like I used it all up. So long term people, you could be a high mileage driver. Forget about leasing. Short term people under under eight years, you you're the one who you want to have leasing as part of your strategy. You either want to do a high mileage lease to avoid this negative equity and these high prices y'all are paying, or you want to do a strategy I call two cars, one payment, where you buy your first car or if you have a car already, you keep that, you pay it off and then you go lease your nice car. Because some of you are like Deshaun, I'm, I'm a short-term person. I want to switch things up. I don't want to just be putting, you know, 200, 300,000 miles on a car. I, you know, I, 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 so now what you're doing is you're keeping your mileage car. It's paid off, and you're going now. You're leasing your nice car, so you got your nice car, and then you split it. So if I was doing 30,000 miles a year, but I wanted to have a nice car, I'm a short-term person. I'm gonna have my mileage car, and then I'm gonna lease another car for like 12,000, maybe 15,000 a year. And then I'll split the mileage between the nice car and the mileage car. And I still have one car payment. So it's super manageable, super manageable. Those are the two high mileage short term strategies, both in the book. But you can apply this yourself. This is just, again, get it wherever you need it. If you can, if you can take the lives and take it and use it, use it. Go get your cars. For those of you who want to have the manual, get the book. It's okay. It, either way, I'm not holding back anything. I'm going to give you the information. I'm going to give it to you on my social media video, 60 seconds. So it's all I really got. I give it to you on this live, detailed as possible. Some of you like, man, I can't remember all this. Watch the replay of the live or go get the book. Get No matter what, get the information. Don't let this go into your head and then slip away. And now you're back doing the old stuff that you used to do that's costing you thousands of dollars. All right. Um, is there a way to find out what the deal is called? And all the new people that just jumped on, the book is 75% off for 30 minutes. TikTok bio, Instagram bio. You can download it immediately, digital book. And I do get, I update the book. So you guys don't have to worry because some of this stuff does change. Rarely though, because the car business is so old. But example, Broom went out of business. Broom was in our book because we used to sell our car. We used to have them bid for our cars. And when we shot for a used car, they were in the runnings. They were one of the marketplaces. We had to delete them because they're out of business as of January. So if I had 100,000 books in print, now you're sitting there with a book that's no longer applicable. It's like, dang, Deshaun, the book was good last year. But now a couple of things out of, with a digital book, all we do is update it. We send you guys out the new file. In fact, we don't even send you out the new file. We update the file. So the next time you open the book, it's the new one. We keep you ahead. I want you ahead. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Everybody just got the book. Thank you so much. Let's go. Let's keep the questions rolling. Um, should I roll in 10,000 of negative equity into a new lease due to high mileage? I would be. Certainly I would. Most times you're going to bury a, and now here's what you got to, here's what you don't want to do. Oh, when you are, and I've buried a lot of negative equity in leases and I've helped people bear a lot of negative equity because they come in and they, you know, they, when I was in the dealership throughout the years, people would come in and they got 8,000, 7,000, 10,000 negative equity. And what I would do is I show them the three year payment. I show them the, the four year payment and the four years, definitely more attractive. There's no doubt about it because depending on the negative equity, you're now paying that off in a three year period if you roll it into a lease. But the thing is when the lease is over, the negative equity is gone. And the thing about negative equity is you're already in a car that's not worth what you're driving. I mean, what you owe. So you're already in a car. What's that car? Let's switch you out of that car. Let's get you in a better car. So if you're going to be in a car that's not worth what you're paying, be in a better car and be in a situation where this is going to end soon. So that's the thing. You're, it's it, The damage is already done. It's just, do I want to drive a used car? and be carrying 10 grand of baggage 
or do I want to get myself in a new financial structure where, yes, I, I got $10,000 of baggage in this too, but I'm paying it off three year, every over three years. And when the lease is up, I'm done. So I would look at a 39 month lease at the longest because you don't want to be in a four year lease because you're just paying too long. You're paying too long. So I would really try to move, but you got to realize with 10 grand of negative equity, you got a Lisa, you got a Lisa car that's probably about 50 grand. Um, don't be scared because you don't know what those payments are going to be. Give you an example. Give you, like if you lease like a, um, I think I got somebody who got a Jeep. Who got a Jeep? Um, no, that's Kimberly Maserati. All right, let's just take this for an example. All right, so this is Greg. You guys can't see it on TikTok, but I'm going to tell you, I'm putting a picture up of Greg. Greg got a, a $56,000 Kia EV6. It's an electric vehicle, SUV. Um, $56,000. He got a 0.9% lease. It's a steal. Underneath, under 1%. Um, his payment's 527 you can't put 10 grand of negative equity on a $20,000 car because you're going to go above the bank's loan to value limits. They're not going to approve it. You could have 800, you could have 900 credit. It's above the loan to value. So you need a car where they can slap 10 grand on top of the price and the bank still approves it. And in order to do that, they'll usually only approve about 20%, maybe 25% of the price of the price of the vehicle. So you're going to need about a 50. You're going to want to shop for about a $50,000 car. Um, but if you get yourself to this and then you slap your negative equity on there, you should still be manageable. But the key is you got to find the right car. You got you to gotta shop for a car where they could take off a lot of money. Jeep, try Jeep Grand Cherokee. You got to shop for the right car and it has to be in the right price range for you to be able to move that negative equity over. Is there a way to find out what the dealer's cost on a vehicle is? Barry? That doesn't matter because the dealer's cost may not dictate your best deal. Hold on. Dealer's cost. See, all right. You got rebates. You got unadvertised things. Dealer's cost doesn't mean that that's the best offer. I don't care what the cost is. I care about what who wins the bid. See, you, if you go back and forth with one person, then, yeah, they'll say, hey, this is my cost. I'm charging you, you know, X amount over it or whatever. No, we get bids. This stuff doesn't matter because knowing the dealer's cost is not going to determine. It's not going to help you when see when you when when a dealer wins a bid the way we get when you guys start actually making dealers bid for your business and talking, you're going to see that. There's no. The only thing that matters is who wins the bid. That's there's no other way for me to put it. Because the, the, the same person who, if I knew your cost, that don't mean you would win the bid. That don't mean you would be willing to sell the car to me at the lowest price compared to your competition. One-to-one -one negotiations is not the way. That's all stuff we used to have to try to worry about when we were doing one-on-one -on -one negotiations. What's the cost? What's the invoice price? Give me the money factor. Give me the rate. Give me the residual. Let me work it out on my finance calculator. We're converting the, the money factor to an interest rate, multiplying it by 2,400. All right. All of this stuff, I'm still sitting over here armed. I got rebates you don't know about. I got stuff over here you don't know about. So you could do your little math. It's not going to help you guarantee your best deal. What guarantees your best deal is you let me get a bid for your business, and then you have four of my competitors bid for your business. And that's easy. That's easy. Y'all are going to save so much more money because I would put myself against anyone in the world. If, if I had to go car shop and they said, all right, we're going to pick five people to car shop and, you know, in the world, these are the best car shoppers in the world. I would anybody I trained would be just like me, carbon copies, because you're going to do it the same way I do it. Anybody who's trying to do this one on one negotiation, I'll get that price from whom? So whatever price you would have gotten, thanks, Peyton, whatever price you would have gotten by being in that dealership for two hours, five hours, coming back three days in a row. All right, come on, give me another. I'm going to get that price sitting right here. I'm going to get that price right here, but I'm going to get three other, uh, four other prices while I'm right here. Bidding, bidding. You'll never feel in control until you start using this stuff. Your next car deal, use this stuff. 
you'll be like, man, I never had more control over my deal. I'm looking to lease a Tesla, but I'm scared because they're hard to shop. Tesla doesn't adjust pricing, so there's no bidding on the price. What you need to do is make sure whatever they're selling the car for, the lease is under 1.5%. You don't bid for the price because there's no the price is set. The reason we bid for every other car is the price is not set. It's not like every car. If I went to nine, if, if there's 900 Honda dealers, 900 Honda dealers will sell a Honda Accord at a different price. Tesla's not like that. Every Tesla gallery, when you order it, it's the same price. I don't care if they say Costco price, doesn't matter. Some dealers are not going to give you the Costco price. Some people say, oh, when Amazon starts up, doesn't matter. Doesn't mean Amazon, Amazon no, part, no, no company can be the lowest price all the time or they're going out of business. If every single time, if, if you and I both sell the same exact product, our costs are exactly the same. I can't be the lowest price every time I'm going to be out of business. So yes, I'm going to be out selling you but I'm going to be out of business because I ain't making no money. So sometimes I'm going to win. Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes this over here, this competitor is going to win because we all are, are, are at different times looking to make a deal. So that's why bidding is important. But when in the case of Tesla, brand new Tesla's not used ones, the price is set. There's no need to bid. But there is a need to make sure their lease program isn't bad, which means if my lease is over 1.5%, no money down, 12,000 miles per year, just giving you my first month's payment. That's how I want to see the offer. I might put money down later, but I need to see the offer. If that's more than 1.5%, it's a bad lease program. Next, I'll lease another. It won't be a Tesla. Not this year. I'll, maybe three years. Maybe in three years we'll come. Y'all adjust your stuff. But I ain't I'm not paying an overpriced lease. One of the biggest benefits of leasing is the, the value. What you get to drive for the money you're paying. And the lower that percentage is, the more value there is. Once it's over 1.5%, no value in leasing it. All right, let's go. All right, this is great. Do you have a link in your book here? I don't uh, I don't see it. Yes, it's on deshaunsbook.com or you can scan the QR code or if you're on Instagram, go to my Instagram bio. You won't leave the broadcast. So if you click the picture of me, double click it, you'll see a website link. Same thing with TikTok um, because the book is 75% off for 30 minutes. So once that timer runs, it goes back up to $97 once the timer runs out. All right. So get your book for 75% off and uh, and enjoy it. How do I purchase your book? Just click the, click the picture of me on TikTok. Go right to my TikTok bio. You'll see a website link. When you click that link, you'll see get book for get my new book for 75% off. Okay, credit bad, but want to get into a car. Um, I would go to lease If my credit was bad, if I'm 550, if I'm 580 and I need to get in a car, I'm going super inexpensive. Unless I'm a long-term person. Now watch this. If you're a this is why y'all you're always gonna see the most important question is always the short and long-term question. That's why in my book, my book is seven steps. The first step is the most important question. How many years are we keeping this car? That is the most important question because you're you're it's the foundation. Once you know your foundation, now we can go and get the strategy. Now we can go and get it. But the foundation is a purchase or a lease. If you choose wrong there, the rest of the deal is crap. Doesn't matter the price of the car. If you choose wrong on the foundation, you lost because the foundation of a purchase leads you to a long term benefit where the depreciation cools off eight years later. You're winning nine years, 10 years. You won. If the, the foundation of a lease is I'm a short term person, so I'm only going to put a small amount of money into these cars and I'm going to drive brand new cars that are reliable. I'm not dealing with the long term hassle and I don't have all this money coming out of my pocket. You can't mix those two. That's why we don't lease and then buy them. That's why we don't take out loans and then trade them. We're going to stop doing that. You're a short term person. You should be leasing. So if I have bad credit, but I'm a long term person, let's say, Deshaun, I got bad credit, uh, but I want to keep this car 10 years. No problem. 
you buy the vehicle you want, make sure you shop aggressively for it, like I'm teaching you this whole broadcast. It's in my book too. And you could always refinance the loan. See, if you don't overpay for the car, if you get a good car, but you got a high interest rate, no problem because an interest rate can be fixed a year down the road, two years down the road. Yeah, you might be paying 20%, but you, you improved your credit. Now you can refinance. Now, if you got a bad car, sometimes people with bad credit, you go out and get a bad car. You don't want to have a bad loan and a bad car. Bad, that's trouble. Bad loan, bad car equals financial nightmare. Good car, high interest rate, bad loan, no problem, because I can fix this. My credit's 690 now. I'm going to refinance this. Yeah, it was 552 years ago. Now I'm at 700. I'm going to refinance that loan and I'll keep it like that. But I'm going to keep this car. I'm keeping this car. I'm just going to switch the loan on it. If you're not a long term person, though, that's not your strategy. You see how different it is? Do you all see how the long term versus the short term affects the strategy? You all see that? Everybody clear on that? I'm going deep on these two scenarios every time to show you how different it is being a long term person, having that strategy and why this is the foundation of your car deals, long versus short term. All right. Here's the answer, because the state will own the vehicle in truth, not the consumer. Uh, I, know, I, I don't know what you're talking about with that. Maybe I missed what y'all were talking about. Um, let's go. All right. Read my question I've asked and you never answered. All right. Listen, watch it, man. Watch it. Watch it. I don't like that type. I don't like that type of stuff, bro. <laughs> you, I don't like that type of stuff, bro. You see how many people on here? Don't don't come on here talking with any type of entitled energy, please. All right. Um. Matter of fact, get him out of here. Get him out of here, man. See, I'm a, I'm, see, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. What I don't like, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like, um, I don't like that. I just can't describe it. So I ain't gonna give him no, I ain't gonna give him no more than what I gave him. Do you have a link to your book here? All right, we saw that. I'm interested to know as well. I didn't see that. Um, What's the 1.5%? 1.5% is we judge a lease by a percentage. When you get a lease quote, let me show you all this. Let me see if I can share my screen and we'll do this to, we'll do this, uh, to give you a, a, a clear understanding. If I could share my screen so y'all can see a calculator, let me see. All right. Boom. Window, entire screen. All right, check this out. So if I go here and I type in, um, oh, let me open my calculator. Can everybody, see, I know y'all can't see it on TikTok. Please subscribe on YouTube so you can see this stuff. But I'm going to break it down for you, okay? YouTube, Facebook, I can present the screen. TikTok doesn't allow. It. So I open this calculator up, boom, right? Now here's what happens. MSO, in order, when we're shopping for at least the two most important things that we care about, forget fees, forget anything. We're getting multiple offers, and this is what we care about, MSRP and monthly payment. No money down. You're going to see all we do is shop with total out-of-pocket is first month payment, 12,000 miles per year. So let's just say somebody gives us an offer of 500 a month, and then we confirm what the MSRP is. We always get the MSRP, and we divide that into the MSRP. So let's say the MSRP is 45,000. That's going to give us, we multiply this by 100. That's a 1.1% lease. That's a 1.1% lease. So when we are looking at lease offers, that's how we compare them. That's how we can easily compare four, five, six, ten 10 offers, and we'll know exactly which one is the best. One dealer says your payment's 450 and the car is 42,000. Four, you know, 569. Okay, that's 1.05%. Um, all right. Uh, another dealer says, all right, your payment 600 and the MSRP is 41,598. Okay, that's 1.44%. That's a higher offer. Uh, another dealer says, all right, your payment is 720 and the MSRP is 42, 42, 544. 
Perfect. That's 1.69%. That's the only one over 1.5. When you do it like this, what you're able to do is you're able to see quickly who's making you the best offer because every single price car we get when we're shopping for a new car, it's different. So in order for us to go with a dip, we need to be able to look at, you, you saw those scenarios. That's how offers come. MSRP is different because this car has uh, um, um, $320. This, has, this car has wheel locks on it for another $90. This car has uh, this option on it for $290. We're not looking at cars that have the exact same MSRP. So when they submit offers to us, all we're doing is we're taking the monthly payment dividing it into the MSRP, that tells us percentage-wise who gave us the biggest discount. That's why we're able to move so quick and make these deals the way we make them. We're able to quickly analyze and we pick the best offer. Now, we always counter offer. In my book, I have this calculator that I use. We plug in all the offers and it spits out the counter offers. But that's the one point. That's the that's that's where the 1.5% rule is, is something that I made up to, because I did the math of when the when you you paid too much for a lease, you're going you, the whole goal with a lease. Well, not the whole goal, there's many, but the, one of the biggest goals is to avoid the depreciation that you would take if you purchased the car. If I would have lost this much if I purchased the car, the goal is to lose this much leasing. But once I get to about one point uh, over 1.5%, now I'm getting to the point where I'm equal or even more than I would have lost had I purchased. That's why would, there has to be a threshold. And I said to myself, there's many people under the 1% rule. I would say if you talk to anybody who knows about getting great lease deals, who's been getting great lease deals like for the last 20 years, they'll they'll prob they're probably familiar with the one percent rule uh i don't even know if it was called a one percent rule but it was you know one percent if you had if your payment was one percent of the msrp or less it was a steal like it was a steal this is not a deal this is a steal like me i had a i had a thirty six thousand dollar i had a thirty six thousand uh dollar jeep grand cherokee laredo at least in 2018 my payment was 330 a month literally gave him 330 dollars and I got out of there, 39 month lease. So that was under 1%. The infinities I had, every lease I've had up until this point was under 1%. Steals, no question. The money we're paying for these cars is pennies compared to anything else. But I noticed there was no rule for people overpaying. So yeah, we all know about this extreme, which is, dad, you did so good on this. I can't believe that's what you're paying. But there was a ton of people in leases who didn't realize they had passed the other extreme, which is, dad, I overpaid for this lease. So that's why we had to create the 1.5% rule. So love it. Everyone who just jumped on, this is great. I'm really enjoying today's show. I hope you are too. If you're enjoying today's show, could you type a one in the chat? I'm really enjoying this. I told y'all at the beginning, my goal was just get through question, question, question. And that's what I'm going to try to do. Sometimes I want to come in and I want to do a little bit more teaching on a specific subject. But sometimes I really want to come in and just do question, questions, 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 questions. Oh, absolutely. That's in my book. Everything that y'all will hear me, I'm teaching from my book. Somebody just said, is that 1% thing in your book? I'm, I teach from my book. So thank you. I make video. When you look at my social media, a lot of y'all are going to be reading my book. If you've watched any of my social media videos, you'll be reading the book, using it, and you'll be like, dang, I remember he made the video on this. Or I remember he said this in the video. So my videos, this show, everything you'll ever see, it's coming from my book. But like I said, if you want it in one spot, 75% off, for our, for our official release, you can get it for 75% off, download it now, and you will get free updates. I don't know how long we'll be able to do free updates. I'm guessing as long as as long as we can connect and, and stay connected in the industry changes, we'll probably continue to do one day we will build software. And that's the we're already working on building software and apps and platforms that will do a lot of this stuff for you. Um, but until that day when we have totally automated everything, then yes, you, we're going to keep updating the book if there's any new things or new tools or new calculators that uh, that we end up inventing. So get your book. 
enjoy it, use it. Thank you so much. Um, anybody who didn't receive the book, it's usually an email issue. I can tell you this, we, we deliver lots of these books. So if you don't get it in 10 minutes, like I said, on that purchase, uh, in that, when, after you purchase it, you'll see the support email or I don't really, it's too many DMs. So I, that's why when you purchase, I say, if you don't receive your book, email this support and my team will get you the book because it's usually one letters changed. The N was came in, in there. Uh, you, you typed an M by accident instead of an N. But anyway, if you if you check your spam, it'll be there. If not, just contact us and we'll make sure we get it. But it's usually just a people see that timer and they're typing a little fast and one letter's a little off. And that throws that throws it off from being able to deliver it to you. Um, hey, Paul. No, I, I don't have. I get results for people. I get results for groups. I get so He said, can I work with you one on one? I appreciate it. I get results for groups. If I didn't think I can, I've been getting results for groups since 2021. I've, I, when I came into this industry, I said to myself, God, if you will allow me to set things up where I can get results for lots of people at once, that will help this mission. It's too many people that need help to do this one-on-one -on -one thing. So I, you know, I, 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 I help groups of people at once, hundreds of people at once, dozens of people at once. And, um, you know, and that's what I do. I do it through my book. We also have a um, we have a video library called Cars from Home University, and I coach people in Cars from Home University. So my goal is just put the information out, give people every single option of how they want it, and then let you choose. Some people say, "Oh, I want to go through all the free videos, and I'll find it, piece it together." God bless you. Do that. Some people say, "I want it all in one spot." Deshaun, I'm gonna go to your bio. I'm gonna get my book 75 percent off download it, use it. God bless you, get it. Some people want to work with us in Cars From Home in the video library. God bless you, do it. Doesn't matter. We just want to make sure you have the information. Some people like, Deshaun, I come on the live shows. You said something on the show. I used that and I won. God bless you, do it. So welcome. I appreciate all the new people. Before I jump off, I just want to say, get your book. If you want to, if you want everything I teach in one spot, click my TikTok bio, click my Instagram bio, click that website and get get that link for 75 percent off or scan deshaun or scan the qr code go to deshaunsbook.com all right um samson see all right man see this is the stuff i don't know how to uh, hey why aren't you answering the questions on youtube i'm answering all the questions i can man. like what are, like what are we what are we talking about what are we talking about <laughs> you you see me we on four platforms at once you get what i'm saying that's the type of stuff that, see, it's not much that get under my skin, man, but I I, I don't like, because you should be saying to yourself, man, I know this dude on four platforms, man, he got like 400 people between all these platforms, he trying to answer all these questions. Don't ask me crazy questions like, why are you not answering the questions on YouTube? Because, I, you know, I just, that's the only stuff, man, y'all see, I'm, uh, uh, I got real thick skin, but I have a very low tolerance for entitlement. I don't owe you nothing, bro. I'm trying to. Uh, you can't benefit from everything you've heard so far. You ain't. You ain't paid me nothing. You don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta be better. <laughs> I gotta be better. Is it better to put down more on a lease or just what the payment would be? I understand how to get to your how you get to your figure on the payment. I do appreciate the info on that. So here's the thing: if you Scott, if you can get to the payment, if you can get when you shop your lease offers. If you can get to your deal under 1.5% or, you know, whatever it is with no money out of pocket, take that deal. Now, sometimes, let's say you're shopping for a heavy car, $50,000 car, $75,000, $100,000 car. Now, you get that under 1.5% offer, but then you look and say, man, this is a great deal. See, pay attention. No down payment. You got to be able to, when you, you're going to be able to look at the deal and say, man, great deal. Forget the payment. <laughs> You're going to say, man, this 1.2%. Great deal. Payment might be 900 because it's a because it's a because it's a Maserati. All right. You know what? I want to lower that to like 800. I'm going to put down 5,000. I'm going to put down 4,000. So you're not buying your deal. A lot of people you've been taught 
they t they got you buying your deals and you leave thinking, man, I got to my payment, but you only got to your payment because you put four grand down. You got to know what the deal is. You got to know this is a great deal before I even put my money down. So once you do that shopping, Scott, you're now just trying to manage your payment. But if you could, I have many people, most people that I, I would say most people, they're shopping their leases, that best offer with just first month payment, they take that, or they might put a little bit, throw a thousand in, but you gotta know the two risk of down payments on leases. If the car is total, you don't get the down payment back. If the car is stolen and not found, you don't get the down payment back. So here's what you gotta ask yourself before you ever put money down on a lease. How many, what's the likelihood this car will be stolen? How many cars have I had stolen? This is how you assess your risk. Now, if you say to yourself, man, I never even had a car stolen before. Good, check that box. It's not that risky for you to put money down. Second question, what's the likelihood this car could be total? Now, if you're looking at a big Mercedes S-Class or a big Jeep Grand Cherokee SUV, not likely, check. I can put money down. I've lowered my risk. Not really a high chance it's going to be stolen. Not really a high chance this is going to be total. Money down, I'll do it. You might be looking at that second question and you're like, man, I'm, I'm, what's the likelihood this car could be total? And you're looking at a Hyundai Elantra, a little small compact car. It's probably not that hard. I get into an accident with that, car's total. So I don't want a higher risk of putting money down on that. So that's how you assess your, it's nothing wrong with putting money down on a lease after you've assessed your risk. You've asked yourself those two questions. That's also in my book. So I know people ask, you know, that, that, that was a great question, is what, the, what is what you just laid out in your book. Everything I talk about is in my book. So uh, is accurate MDX 2022 reliable? That's a question for Google. Don't ask, don't ask people there. Look, you do what you want because everyone on here is an adult. I would recommend you don't ask people their opinions on cars because people's opinions are subjective. You want to go to where the data is because 100,000 of those cars are on the road, most likely 10,000, 50,000. And what you want to do is we Google those things. We Google 2022, what you just asked me, Acura MDX 2022 reliability. And you just skim that first page of articles. You look at those articles. Don't go to anything on a dealer's page. Go to those independent articles. They'll tell you electrical issues. They'll tell you engine problems. They'll tell you owners complaining. You'll see all of that on the first page. Then you type in long, then you type in Acura MDX 2022. You always have to put the year in because we know sometimes there's a good year and then they make the, and sometimes there's a bad year that has problems. They make all the adjustments and the next year is a good one. So you always want to put the specific year in, but you type in Acura 2022 MDX longevity. That's going to tell you about the what are people who what are people who have the vehicle and who have studied the vehicle for the long term saying about it. You check those two things. That's how you find out. Don't ask your neighbor, hey, what you think about that Maserati? Man, I love it. It's my favorite car. You get yours. That joined in the shop in 90 days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So go where the data is. <laughs> uh all right well we've been on here for an hour and 44 i would do some more i'm gonna come back later so if y'all do see a notification that i'm live later please jump on um it, it, just just when you see on if you're on our email list um which means you got our cheat sheet you can go to deshaun's cheat sheets.com if you're on our email list you'll get the notifications we're going to start next week sending out notifications of when we're live um, but this is the kind of stuff I like. I like to do straight up Q and a straight up Q and a fast. Um, thank you, Dwayne. Appreciate you, bro. Um, I just joined, you may have answered this question. Oh yeah. I just, cause we'll go into, I think we've been on here for an hour and 45 minutes already or something like that. And we'll just, we'll just, we'll just keep going longer, but I will be back for another session. Uh, just jump on, bring your questions for those of you who got the book. I appreciate it and use it dig in immediately make sure you email me your success story 75 percent off my new book is called car shopping for people that hate car shopping seven steps to saving time money and avoiding dealerships we should not be in dealerships 
more than 30 minutes. I know some of, that sounds crazy to some of y'all. How the heck am I going to save thousands of dollars, Deshaun, without being in a dealership more than 30 minutes? That's what we do. It's called bidding. It's called getting bids. We don't fight one person for deals anymore. So that's all. That's what the entire book is about. That's what all my videos about. That's what this whole show was about today. So you can get your copy for 75% off for the next 30 minutes. Go to my TikTok bio or my Instagram bio. Click that website and then click the button that says 75% off my new book. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, you can scan the QR code with your camera or go to Deshaun'sBook.com. And uh, let's save this money, y'all. I want y'all writing me about the money you save. Yes, I want to hear about your new cars when you get them. DM me, send me the picture. But before you send me the picture of the car, send me the picture of the price you pay. <laughs> All right? That's what I want y'all to have. All right, I'll see y'all on the next broadcast, all right? This was a good one, though. Thank y'all.